the issues. And we agreed that uh, tonight we will continue where we left in the morning. Uh, with regard to Mojimole Mokopong, you all know that it obtained a disclaim audit opinion for the third consecutive year. The municipalities 2019-20 COVID special adjustment budget and it's tabled and adopted, as it's tabled and adopted for 2021, you know that they were unfunded. The ESCOM debt as at, my apologies, I forgot to put my phone on silent. The ESCOM debt as at end of June 2020, it amounted to half a billion without any repayment arrangements in place. Consequently, the municipality was among the top 10 contributors to wasteful and fruitless expenditure, nationally because of the ESCOM interest penalties amounting to over 50 million. The other issue that I want to raise it's um, around uh, these developments that you see. He can't be then be having this uh, wasteful expenditure that amounts to 50 million. Uh, for us, this is a very worrying development, especially because uh, this raised red flags regarding the effectiveness of the now terminated intervention in uh, because it was our expectation that post the intervention things will look bit, better, but you can see MEC what is happening there. Uh, it's um, among those municipalities we visited during our visit to Limpopo last year because it has invested uh, with VBS and lost 243 million. Among the observation we made as a committee was that there were still simmering tensions arising from the poor handling of the amalgamation of Fitahomu and Greater Tobatse municipality, including the pay disparities amongst employees in the same salary grade. As a committee, we are very also concerned, MEC, about the impact of amalgamations on their functionality or as and when they become the merged entities. Maybe you can share with us your experience as a province with this regard. And uh, we will all know that uh, both Mutimule Mukopongo and Fita Komutuvatse are new formations resulting from the 2016 demarcation process. It is almost certain that the problems that led to the invocation of Section 139 in these municipalities are a direct consequence of also of the amalgamation. We have scheduled the issue of amalgamation for in depth on Friday, the 13th of November, MEC, and would like to also invite you to also come and share your experiences as a province. Salga will be leading that discussions as well, including National Cock Type and National Treasury. Tava Zimbi was also part of our oversight itinerary in Limpopo because it had obtained consecutive disclaimers for a number of years. Amongst the issues we identify as contributing to the successive disclaimers was the late submission of annual financial statements for auditing and the fact that the municipality has been operating on an unfunded budget since 2016. The committee further observed that there were also serious litigations in Tabazimbi amounting to hundreds of millions of rents, and these were becoming a breeding ground for fictitious and fraudulent claims. We are keen to hear from the MEC regarding the extent to which the now terminated constitutional intervention in Tabazimbi has also assisted in resolving these matters. Today, we have also a follow-up meeting with the city of Pulukwane as resolved in our meeting of 1st September 2020. In that meeting, the committee agreed to schedule a meeting with the MEC uh, for National Treasury, National Cocta, and the MEC for Cocta in the province and Salga to discuss the underlying uh, challenges experienced uh, in the municipality, including its liquidity challenges. 
This will also be an opportunity to revisit any outstanding matters arising from the previous uh, interactions. And uh, with this, I wanted, I was still waiting for the other two members that uh, were on my speakers list to log in. I can then welcome you again back, MEC, uh, with the team, including the colleagues from um, Cocta, Salga, and the Cocta in the province, including the colleagues of the from the National for Provincial Treasury, uh, the Depo Kunsi, you have been here, I think since 20 past six. Then those are the matters that I felt I need to deal with. Honorable Hussein, are you ready? Uh, yes, Honorable Chair. Hussain? I'm here. Good evening to you and everybody else, Chairperson. May I proceed? Yes. So, uh, Chair, just to get your guidance, I'm following through on the questions for where we left off on the last occasion and Mohala Kwena. For Mohala Kwena, remember I stopped yes. you, you just made the preamble, yes. you didn't say anything. Yes. Yeah, I, I just want to confirm that that's the order. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, sure. So, Chair, thank you very much. I, I won't repeat the opening comments that I made, um, um, except to say that I think that although we, we're making some progress there, the situation in the municipality remains a concern. And I think, Chairperson, since uh, although the municipality has been placed admin under administration, it gives us an indication that that there is a, you know, some attempt to try and get control over the municipality and return it to a sense of, of normality and good governance there. But of recent and since our last visit there, there are a number of questionable incidents that occurred, Chair, that, that requires attention. Uh, that doesn't give one the sense of confidence that that we are really starting to turn the corner. Uh, let me start firstly, Chair, with this issue around the COVID expenditure. I mean, I think you will agree that the amount of 62 million rand is quite a large sum of money that has been spent on uh, uh, on uh, you know COVID-related expenditure, and understandably, most of it might have been spent uh, for very good reason. But I do want uh, to raise the concern about the lack of information that has been provided in that report, and I'm talking about specific detail. Um, I think you and other members of our portfolio committee, Chairperson, we are generally a little bit skeptical and suspicious when we receive reports with, uh, you know, high-level reports, especially when it comes to expenditure, and then the, the detail is missing. Uh, to spend 58 million rand in the provision of uh, tankers to various uh, uh, communities, whilst I understand it is definitely needed and it was an emergency situation, I'd really like to know exactly what the the cost, uh, you know, per per the seven companies that were were contracted. And when you look at the slide on the um, COVID nineteen expenditure, uh, when it comes to the uh, uh, some of the line items there. You can see that the municipality relied on a database of existing contractors. But when it comes to the biggest uh, uh, part of the expenditure, which is the water tankers, uh, that was uh, relied on, on deviations and quotations. And that makes one a little bit more suspicious about it can't be to me that, to, that the, a municipality that has a constant water problem uh, does not have a set of existing contractors that they can rely on. Uh, so I'd like to hear from the municipality whether or not there they was at that stage um, a, a database of existing uh, service providers when it comes to water tankers. And if the answer to that is yes, why then did they not use those contractors and instead relied on seven new companies to provide a service to the municipality under that uh, emergency COVID expenditure? And also the, a little bit more detail, um, if the municipality can provide us that detail in writing, I will be grateful. Uh, that shows exactly how much was spent on sanitizers and masks and, and all the other related uh, PPEs. Then, um, Chair, there was a, um, a, a, a recent report around um, the, um, uh, the last item that Honorable Cesar raised um, relating to uh, the qualifications of Mr. Mashamaite. 
and I'd like to hear from the municipality whether or not that matter is being investigated or has been investigated um, and what is the outcome of it and where exactly are they on it. I want to also get the, while I'm on the issue of Mr. Jabu Mashamaite, um, you will remember, Chairperson, when the municipality appeared before us previously, uh, there was a concern that was raised around his, uh, his suspension and uh, the pending disciplinary matter. And if I, re if I Can recall... Can you hold it? Yes, I think let me talk to Honorable um, Pumza to... Oh, he has muted his mic. Initially, he was interjecting you. Okay. He has since muted it. Proceed. Yeah, Chair, when the municipality was before us previously, um, and there was a pending investigation and disciplinary against Mr. Mashamaite, and there was an attempt by uh, an attempt to try and withdraw that uh, that those disciplinary proceedings to which the the new municipal manager refused to do, and then coincidentally, sh uh, uh, shortly thereafter, she was on on study leave for a period of of three months. Um, so that incident, chairperson, that I recall. Uh, raised some eyebrows, and I, I see now in the report uh, the, that the disciplinary uh, has been now finalized and he has returned to work. I, I, I don't want to cast aspersions on the process, um, but given the circumstances that we were exposed to previously, I am curious about exactly what had transpired in that hearing and how was it actually resolved. Is it a case of was it withdrawn? Or did the matter proceed to you know to its nth degree, and uh, there was a ruling by the by the disciplinary panel? I'd like to get a little bit more detail on that, um, as well as the issue around the public pr protector and the report that that um, that finds that Mr. Maisha Maite um, did not have the necessary qualifications when he was employed by the municipality. Where exactly is the municipality on that, and have they investigated it? Then, Chair, I know that the municipality is also short on, on funding, especially when it comes to the service of provision of water to the uh, various parts of the municipality. Uh, in particular, I'm referring to the, the very large number of schools in, that, in the province that, um, that is unable to receive or did not receive a proper supply of water, especially during the COVID-19 period, uh, the lockdown period. And um, the explanation from municipality as well as the province was that the, they didn't have sufficient funds to do it. And so the, the, uh, uh, the relevant department, uh, the Department of Water, should actually cover that cost. Now, whilst that's understandable, Chairperson, the part that I, I struggle to deal with is that if the municipality was so shortage, short on funds, there is now a recent report about the mayor um, spending more than 200 or 1,000 rand uh, for a Mercedes-Benz to hire a Mercedes-Benz for herself. And that matter has been um, in the public domain. Um, I don't know how much longer she went on to hire a Mercedes-Benz. You would expect that in a municipality that has a shortage of funds to provide water to people, that, um, that uh, it wouldn't be acceptable for a mayor to be spending that amount of money on a Mercedes-Benz. So, I'd like to hear a response from the mayor whether or not she thinks that such a such conduct on her behalf is is acceptable, and whether or not the MEC was aware of this and what action did he take. Um, what was the total amount of money that was actually spent on hiring that Mercedes Benz by by the mayor? Well, I'd like to get the full amount and for how long it went on and where exactly are they on it? Because surely, if that money is beyond what is required for uh, the uh, you know the upper limits for mayors to be spending on vehicles then the municipality must recover that money from the mayor and she can't get away with it. So the mayor must please address us on that. I'd like to get that information. And if the MEC is aware of it, I'd like to hear from him as well, whether or not um, he's doing anything about it. Chairperson, there was a recent um, court ruling as well in respect of a security tender in the high court in that province. And it was a civil matter between two security companies who actually were providing services to the municipality. And in those court papers, what emerged was a story of how one security company, um, in the name of Mashlatsi Security Services, was actually defrauding the municipality and inflating invoices for up to about 
Now the court found that the the uh, the owner of that company is was very dishonest to the uh, to the court, and and there was clearly a case of fraud there. <coughs> Interestingly enough, chairperson, <clears throat> the name of the person who's linked to this company is the same person that was linked to the company called KTS Trading. You remember, Chair, I raised that matter uh, when Mr. Masha Maita was here the last time round, um, where he confirmed that he was. He, 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 you know, he was familiar with the, with the owner of that company, Mr. Mashishi. So it start, one starts to become a bit concerned about the role that, that uh, this particular company and that particular individual and the links that they have uh, with certain officials and politicians in that municipality. And I want to raise this matter with the MEC. Um, firstly, whether or not he's aware of this matter. Uh, and secondly, is he, if he is aware of it, is he doing anything about it? Uh, if he's not aware of it, if he can give the portfolio committee an undertaking that he will try and get to the bottom of it and get the questions out of the municipality. Because if there was a company that was defrauding the municipality, surely that, that company can't get away with it. And we must make sure that we get our money back. But equally so, I think that what we need to do is that that matter should be investigated and the role of any officials with that individual also must be investigated so that some action can be taken against them. Um, Chair, I have two or three other follow-up questions. I'm happy to just stand down for now. Um, if, if there are other members who have further questions, I'm happy to take them on, um, on a second round or but I'm in your hands. Can you proceed, proceed while I'm waiting for the other members to come? All right, okay, Chair. We're still waiting for them to log in. Okay. Then, um, Chair, I wanted to put just one matter to the MEC in respect of the um, uh, the wage bill. Uh, you know, I think there's a problem. Firstly, in the entire in the entire province, um, when you have 54% of the wage bill that municipalities are spending on financial uh, departments, which to me is uh, is quite a high figure. And is this a matter that the the MEC is dealing with, and is, is it getting his attention? I see in the 2018-2019 audit outcomes um, that there was 54 million rand that was spent on consultants in oh, um, And is this a matter that's that's receiving his attention? And I'd like to hear uh, his response on that. Then, lastly, Chairperson, the uh, there is the uh, uh, um, the stadium issue that came up. I think on the previous occasion when we had engaged with the municipality, the Mokopane. Um, stadium, the sports complex, um, where 25 million rand was spent on it, but the uh, the complex was not even completed. Uh, if we can please just get an update on exactly where we are on that particular matter, I'll leave it there, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank you for the for the colleagues who have joined us uh, late. Uh, because Honourable, so it's your turn. I also see Honourable Mbongsas and his up. We are completing the set of questions on Mohanakwena. Remember, we adjourned the meeting. Can I hand over to you, Honorable Law? Honorable Law? Uh, welcome, MEC for Treasure in the province together with the head of department we have since joined. Welcome. Uh, the D HOD also of uh, Coxter, she was in and living in the morning. She's here. Honorable Clo. Oh, okay. I was just waiting for you to finish. Okay, thank you, uh, Chairperson. My question is one that, with regard to the municipality not re re reporting timelessly as requested by the law and regulation, what remedial action had you taken to improve the situation? And then uh, to, to the Salga, the second question on the issue of lack of discipline with high absenteeism and no consequence management and also the project management. 
and ignorance, which impact negatively on the progress of municipality. Then uh, what did you do as a result of that? I thank you, Chairperson. Okay, the next speaker will be Honorable Mpumza. I'm checking where Honorable Hatebe is in the meantime. Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Am I audible? Yes, you are loud and clear. You at the neighbor's house tonight. <laughs> I'm in Jobe, Chair. Yeah, that's the, you are it's so no loud. network in Jobe. Thanks, Chairperson. <laughs> and, uh, uh, let me greet uh, the chair, honorable members, and uh, the MMCs and all other people. Chair, my first question goes to the two MMCs. In our last election, I raised my concern about uh, this uh, belated uh, 139 intervention. When uh, all the horses that bolted out of the store. And my concern is related to the fact that uh, the monitoring and the support that uh, MECs, we, you are providing to municipalities. Can you hear Honorable Mpumza colleagues? No, we can. Particularly, no, the 46 reports. And support. Ma, Honorable Mpumza. Honorable Mpumza. Chairperson. Honorable Mpumza. Yeah, you had frozen. Yes, sir. Can you repeat your question? You had frozen. All right, thank you. Yeah. Can you repeat your question, please? Thanks, sir. Let me repeat. But to say on the other issue, that's where we lost you when you were still saying the other issue. Yeah, I was saying that uh, the monitoring and support uh, that uh, the the Coke star and the Treasury are providing uh, to municipalities, uh, that they are also uh, being uh, enhanced by the provision in law, particularly the Section 71 and the 46 reports. Uh, are these departments having the capability of monitoring and support as provided in law in analyzing and assessing the Section 81 reports and Section 46 so that they are in a position uh, to get a preemptive strike on the developments before municipalities might regress? Uh, to what extent and then therefore are we pro in particular related to the polarization of uh, the complex municipal environment? Where in around we find that on the main, the determinant factor is the fact that we'll get that there is instability, which is uh, bringing unbearable pressure on administration and collapsing the whole um, uh, uh, governance and oversight. These are areas, my question therefore is it, are we able to analyze as the departments and assess the section 71 report so that we may early intervene? Uh, again, Chair, in the report uh, of the MEC through the, the Director General, there was an indication that uh, this intervention um, is focusing on these thematic areas, sound labor restrictions and strengthening financial management. But in the report of the MISA, uh, in the report of MISA, there is an indication that um, there is a slow supply chain processes, which is a challenge in that uh, some uh, uh, bids had to take over almost nine months before they could be attended to. Now, are uh, the challenges that are raised by MISA uh, pre the intervention, or are these challenges still staying current uh, post this intervention 
uh, of section 139. And if it's that case, why is it so that uh, whilst you are intervening, a uh, MESA is indicating that there are still slow processes in supply chain? The second, the DG was indicating that uh, uh, the labor relations are improving. Can we be assured as a committee that uh, the turbulent labor relations in Mkharekwane municipality has stabilized? In, again, in the, in the report by the department, Coxter, of the number of uh, forensic report uh, that had been submitted or tabled to council on the 25th of August. Uh, how many forensics reports are still outstanding that are still to be tabled? And of those the forensic reports that have been tabled to council, what caused uh, the municipalities in CAD in commissioning such forensic investigations. MESA also is indicating that uh, in the report that uh, there is a water scarcity as well as there is a prevalent drought in Mukhalegwana. Uh, but despite these challenges, water scarcity, everything, the municipality has only prioritized one, one water project as an intervention to the drought and the water crisis. Can the mayor explain to us why have they failed to prioritize the provisioning of water services during the era of water scarcity and drought? And uh, again, the 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 DG was indicating that uh, in the report we commend that uh, the intervention had acted on the official who was uh, leapfrogged from a junior position to a senior position. That that position had been regretted. Uh, that position. Now the question is: appointment was irregular. What if financial consequence management had been undertaken to recoup the irregular payment arising out of that irregular uh, appointment to a senior position? I can say the current irregular expenditure of 613 million in the current year can we be explained by the mayor and the leadership of the municipality? Uh, particularly the chair of the MPAC, which is in there. Why, how much has been condoned or written off of that 613 irregular expenditure, of that 613 million irregular expenditure? And what consequence management has the MPAC recommended for the council uh, to take action and recall some of the money that had been irregular and spent. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, um, Honorable Mpumza. Honorable uh, Mam Kize, I saw you showed your face. You wanted to say something? Uh, yes, Chair. I want to say something to them, Halakwen. Proceed. Hello. Proceed. Hello. You must proceed. Oh, okay. Proceed. Okay, Chaperson. Uh, thank you, Chaperson. Chaperson, I do have a question to the Mahalakwena municipality. At Mahalakwena municipality, there is the issue of land. Many claims were have been a uh, lot in the uh, to the government within the Mukhalagwena municipal area of jurisdiction how many claims have been finalized that is the impact what is the impact of the land claims 
on spatial development in this municipality for both so in this municipality uh if the mayor can tell us about mom kiss. Mom hello. Kiss. is hello. that the team that is behind you can you switch it off oh okay okay sorry please sorry please. Sorry, sorry can you switch it off Okay, okay. I did, I did. Yeah. Sorry, man. Sorry. Sure. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> in the uh, oh, <clears> or <throat> oh, let me start. Uh, 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 maybe the uh, uh, where I was saying, how many uh, claims have been uh, finalized? What is the impact here of the land claims on spatial development in this municipality? Can the municipality tell us about land availability owned by the municipality for both residential and industrial and uh, industrial development? Is there any land uh, <clears throat> is there any land invasion that happened in the municipality since the outbreak of uh, COVID-19, if it remember, if I remember very well, Muharakwena municipality has gazetted its land used by laws known as Muharakwena municipality land user scheme in 2016, which was accepted application via the Spruma. Thank you, Chairperson. Is Honorable Hadebe in? I don't want to be accused of skipping him. Is he in? Is Honorable Hadebe, I don't see him here. If that is the case, let me then uh, deal with the following issues. Uh, how much of the current year 613 million irregular expenditure is council condone? How much did council condone in respect of the 2.3 billion irregular expenditures incurred in the previous financial year? The other issue that uh, I want to ask the municipality has suspended a technical services employee since 2018 for theft of diesel. More than two years later, a sanction is still outstanding. What is taking the municipality so long to finalize what to be an unsophisticated case? I mean, the turnaround time, the turnaround time uh, uh, is this how and how many other employees are like this employee who are still in suspension because this is an unsophisticated case then uh, that's the issue that one wanted to also understand on these matters and then maybe central to what honorable Hussein raised uh, the understanding is that uh, the public report, protectors report has been implemented. I want clarity because I might be like Honorable Hussein. And then I think I heard you saying that uh, Mr. Mashamaita has reverted back to his original position. Am I wrong or am I correct? Because we want to, under if that is correct, prior to his appointment, what is the title of that position and maybe for us to understand the the difference in terms of the gaps and the salary levels. So those are the issues that one wanted to also then, uh, then uh, because the issue again, this one, with regard to Mr. Mashamaite, the public protector found that the appointment was regular in that it did not meet the requirements for the position. Only the MEC's presentation reports extensively deal with this. 
why then is the municipality's presentation not reporting anything on this? And why uh, Mr. Mashamati suspension ended within two weeks while the cases of all other employees are taking so many months to finalize? That those the, are the issues that we wanted to hear from you. And before you 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 respond, I made a mistake earlier in the morning. Uh, but I said that will be part of the responses. Uh, Councillor, um, what is the set name? I asked who's this councillor, Councillor Rasi. I forgot the surname. name, you'll pardon me, but I saw the name there and I was asking, the mayor was trying to tell me that he's a councillor in uh, Kwena. Maybe the PMT responds, respond. Can we give it to you, Councillor Rasi, to say what you want? That's my, my apologies. Yes. Can I recognize you? Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Th thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair and uh, the Mayor of Mughalakona Municipality, the Honorable Members of the Honorable Portfolio Committee of COCTA nationally and the MEC for COCTA uh, in Limpopo. The issues I wanted to raise, I'm, I'm, I'm the member of the Executive Committee in Mughalakona Municipality and I, I have attended this meeting and I thought it's necessary for me not just to attend and listen, but to raise few issues which uh, I've always been raising in the meetings of the ESCO and the council about uh, number one, the role of uh, the can intervention. I, can I, uh, Councillor Maipa, can I plead with you to put on your microphone and all others, the, the video, my apology, ne? the camera on. Uh, the TV people have alerted me that you are live in the panel channel parliamentary channel. So it will be good that whoever is going to speak should make sure that their videos are on. Oh, okay. Um, thanks very much. Am I audible, uh, Honorable Chair? And visible as well. I can see you Thank as you well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I wanted to raise uh, quite a number of issues. And number one is that uh, uh, on the role of the head of intervention uh, in the municipality, just to raise these matters with uh, the highest level of disappointment on the role of the head of intervention in, in Mohala Kuena. Uh, number one is that the role of uh, the head of intervention in Mohalakwane municipality has uh, since been um, having some elements of uh, causing more confusion and not helping the situation in Mohalakwane to uh, be at a normal state. The, in July, when we were planning for the IDP, the IDP process plans, uh, the, the draft IDP was presented to the Esquen Council and recording in terms of labor and which is the one of the mandates of the head of intervention to deal with uh, recorded uh, 619 uh, employees in the municipality uh, which were then um, hired by the municipality in the organogram and the final idp then came with uh, 919 um, Organ members in the organogram, employees in the organogram. And I raised the question in the S committee to say to the head of intervention, why, what inflated the organogram from the 600, and 600 uh, to 919? Uh, what happened exactly? Where are these people coming from? Why have we not seen the adverts uh, that uh, then dealt with that matter? And since today, we have not got an answer from the head of intervention. We have since said 
he will provide the answer and the answer was not provided to uh, to 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 the esco and the council um, respectively the other worrying matter uh, honorable chair it's on the issue of water provision for covid-19 water cutting uh, project which uh, was uh, then secured um, with the emergency approach and um, the 62 million which was spent i've raised the question also and i wrote them a letter in the municipal to say what ex what exactly is happening that they uh, can inflate or let the municipality spend 62 million on water if if we are to be real uh, honorable chair the 62 million can uh, construct uh, more than 100 uh, boreholes and uh, also putting standpipes and Jojo tanks for the 172 villages, rural villages uh, in Magalakwena. And we know we shall have uh, dealt with the issue of water uh, permanently, if it's not permanently, but on a long term uh, 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 approach. So the 62 million was uh, actually uh, uh, unreasonable, and uh, we believed that uh, somebody has lent a hand uh, to make sure the prices there are, 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 are inflated. And we have since written them a letter to say what exactly is happening, let there be investigation. And we also quoted some of the companies after we've, we've made our own investigation, like the, the, the company called Mune Sumusa, which was paid 2.7 million uh, recently on the issue of water cutting. We were surprised that uh, a company for water cutting can be paid 2.7. I thought uh, maybe this person was uh, delivering water using a helicopter because uh, if it's a truck of water, it cannot make 2.7 monthly. Uh, something is not right. They, they, we, we plead that let there be investigation uh, in this regard because in all our our questions which we've been raising, we have not getting answers. We'll never get an answer from the mayor. You will never get an answer uh, from the head of intervention. You will not get an answer from everybody in the Mkhalakone municipality. Uh, when you raise issues, those issues will just be packed on the side. And when there are critical meetings, such as meeting with the MEC and the portfolio committees, the office of the mayor, would deliberately not invite you or the head of intervention will deliberately not invite you because maybe they do not want the truth to be uncovered we do not know that's something which uh, it's also of concern uh, to us the head of intervention uh, one of his mandate is that uh, he must then uh, promote sound financial management the question is that if he is having the responsibility and mandate to then uh, promote sound and sound uh, financial management. Is he part of uh, signing the payments for the 2.7 million, which was paid to Mone Sumusa and other companies that contributed to the 62 million? And if he did uh, sign such, what is he in the municipality of Mogalagona for? If he's not, uh, if he's doing things outside uh, uh, his mandate, is he there to bring stability or worsen uh, the situation in in Mugalakwe? The the organogram did not come to us to cancel an ESCO uh, since uh, he came, and uh, we do not know why uh, such happened. The matter of uh, Jabu Mashamaite, we know the matter is still under review as per the court order which was issued. And uh, uh, it, it, like the chair has indicated, the matter of Jabu Mashamaite took two weeks to be finalized. And other matters for other uh, officials in the municipality are not attended to. And this will tell you that uh, the head of intervention is also uh, playing politics uh, in the institution and that causes more confusion and that creates serious turmoil and uh, causes serious instability uh, in the institution. 
Honorable Chair, the Council and its committees are still meeting uh, beyond the uh, scheduled uh, calendar of the municipality, which was, which was uh, acknowledged and approved by the Council in July. In, in many instances, we would have uh, an agenda of Council with uh, short items. And then the other councillors would have an agenda with uh, all items. And then the mayor and other councillors together with the head of intervention will then have uh, the agenda with all the items which must be discussed uh, in, the, in the meeting of the ESCO and the council. The, 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 there was a meeting on the 26th, on the 29th of uh, October, the council meeting, uh, where we were supposed to submit the financial recovery plan and the budget funding plan. Uh, the due date was on the, on the 30th and uh, the meeting was held a day before, or the due date was supposed to be on the same date and uh, this matter did not even pass through the portfolio committee for finance. It came straight to council. Or, and just after they shall have issued the agendas to all councillors, the following morning of the date of the council that must approve that uh, financial recovery plan and the budget funding plan, they called an emergency portfolio committee in the morning because they knew that we were going to then question to say why uh, this matter is brought to before the ESCO and Council without necessarily passing through uh, the portfolio committee uh, as a due process. And they did that. And these things are happening uh, in front of the head of intervention. And he's not saying anything, he's not doing anything. And uh, we, 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 we are highly disappointed and we think that uh, his role in the municipality, it's, uh, it's actually worsening of the situation. The MEC for Corkstar one day attends the council meeting and uh, I stand up and say, why is the MEC attending the meeting of the council whereas we have got head of intervention who is then the eyes and the years of the MEC in the council, why is the MEC coming uh, himself? He later on after arguments left and said uh, he will not come back because he knew that what he was doing uh, was actually wrong. So, so there is an open um, interference of a uh, the MEC, which uh, sometimes he even attempts to come himself he, to attend to stoop so low to want to attend council meeting, not the provincial executive committee uh, meeting or council meeting, the local municipality council meeting, the MEC, which it, it, it's very wrong to even see the MEC stooping so low to want to come to attend the uh, uh, council meetings. The, the, the PMU, the presenter from, from the Cockstar said uh, there are no skills in the PMU, uh, but at the same time says that they have put uh, permanent resident engineers to ensure all the, all the shortcomings in, that, in the municipality are dealt with and all requirements are met. So, so, so there's also contradiction. You, you ask yourself, what is it that these people want to say? If they are saying there are no skills at the same time, they are saying uh, they are resident engineers in that space. It's, a, it's, a, it, it's contradictory and uh, the, there must be a clarity on that. On the issue of absent of uh, PMU and uh, other uh, managers or members of the uh, memory of the institution, uh, just want to check if this matter was elevated to the municipal manager and what was the municipal manager's response together with the head of intervention in this regard. Uh, I think, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, this, this was, these were issues I wanted to, to raise with you. I'm also pleading that uh, 
in encourage the office of the, the MEC, the office of the mayor to extend invitations to all councillors of the ESCO when they are such matters because we for us to get solutions which are tangible we must then unpack uh, the truth and put it on the table where we are weak and say we are weak so that we can uh, together find solutions and permanent solutions to the problems which uh, are facing the municipality of Mgalakoena and request the the cox that in the province to report the true reflection without conniving with anyone of what is happening in Mgalakoena municipality because the report they presented and their presentation uh, most of the things which were raised there are, 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 have got questions and are, are not correct. I would uh, request, uh, Honorable Chair, that uh, maybe the portfolio committee, when it comes, it, 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 it uh, invites all of us and to a larger extent invite the whole council to then unpack and hear uh, what exactly is happening in Mgalakwena. The intervention in Mgalakwena for now uh, is not doing anything, is worsening uh, problems. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's the lack of capacity of the head of intervention or the intervention itself is not relevant. And if uh, these matters of organograms and the matters of uh, reports are brought now after nine months, it, it's surprising uh, to do that. Lastly, the legal opinion which uh, the Cogstar said it wants to sort uh, on the exoneration of the municipal manager, I don't know why is that uh, uh, going to take place. Uh, we have seen a letter which was written by the head of intervention to the mayor to say they want to, the requesters Cogstar to sought for such a legal opinion. What informs such things? So there are also elements of uh, witch hunting of other people and that is caused by contestation of power between the head of intervention and the municipal manager because the head of intervention at times uh, calls himself the administrator and he wants to be seen presiding over anything and he wants to also to be above the council, which is the final arbiter uh, in, in that sphere of local government. So uh, the issues which I've raised, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, if uh, there's a need for us to write and put them in point form, we can always do that. And uh, those that need a response now, they can be responded to. Thank you very much for affording me an opportunity uh, to speak in this uh, important forum. Uh, of the portfolio thank committee you. for cooperation. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Councillor Rasi. Honorable Adev, I see you are in now. Honorable Adev, your issues on Mokhalakwana? Yes, yes, I've, I've, I've just logged, logged in. Um, just give me a search so that I can uh, sort my house into order and, and get the, my, my notes. The second, we are waiting. Now, the second is over, Honorable Adel. Honorable Adel. Honorable Adel. Your microphone yes. is muted. Chair? Let, yes, let's proceed. Uh, no, no, no. Th 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 thank you, Honor Honorable Chairperson. That um, video has to be on. My video? Yes. We are live on 408. No, th 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 thanks, Chairperson. Uh, uh, I'm quite disorganized. Um, I've been having back-to-back -back meetings. I just came out of Scopa. So my notes are, are, are highly disorganized. Hence, 
I, 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 I recall that <laughs> time. But yeah, from what was was presented to us um, uh, earlier, when the meeting uh, we, we had during the day, it reflected and painted a picture of an administrator that is uh, on top of her game, because she indicated to us that uh, um, all, 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 all the stakeholders within that municipality are cooperating. Uh, uh, that uh, she's, is it was it the DDG chair from Coxter that was doing the presentation? Yeah, it's not the administrator. The administrator is a he. Oh yes, I'm saying that presented was the DDG. Yes, from yes, Cox. yes. Yeah, the DDG from Coxter. She indicated that um, um, the administrator at this current juncture, which is nine months down the line. Uh, they are receiving cooperation from workers, managers, council, and that is key towards the successful implementation of the terms of reference as per the uh, 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 intervention. Now, that on its own check gives a sign of relief, and the report that it presented it indicates also that the uh, financial recovery plan has been uh, adopted by council and it's now on the implementation phase. What I wanted to get a sense on an understanding in terms of that plan. Can they just give us a, a synopsis of the key and milestone projections as contained within the plan to say, uh, this is how long we think it will take for the plan to be fully implemented and for the municipality to turn around and become one of the municipality that can stand on its own without administration. So I am very much uh, keen and interested in those milestone projections so that at least we have a sense uh, in us conducting our oversight. I think I want to stress that this point, which I should have done earlier, that as this portfolio committee, we have taken a posture uh, uh, to do, not to do a, a, a post ex post facto, uh, uh, oversight where we come after the effects. We, we, we have seen uh, and we have learned the hard way in other municipalities where they were put under administration. Mm -hmm. but two, two years down the line, uh, we get report that the, the, the intervention did not work. In some instances, you will have a, a, a municipality with intervention more than three times. So for us to be effective in our oversight, we taken a posture to continuously assess and monitor the progress of the intervention, which is why nine months down the line, we have called Mohala Gwenda to give us an account because by now they should have, the administrator should have received at least three quarterly reports. But the picture that is painted indicates a picture which is good to us. The other aspect here that I need clarity on in terms of the public protectors uh, uh, findings on, uh, is it Mr. Mashamayite, if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, uh, and the remedial action. Uh, the DDG only gave account of two remedial action, that of uh, Mr. Mashamayite reverting back to uh, his previous position and the salary uh, uh, to the previous salary, were, were those the only two remedial action as per the public protectors finding uh, if there are any uh, other than those two, have they implemented all? Because uh, th th that's the area of concern on my side. And also what is concerning, Chair, is the issue of a budget that is unfunded. Uh, if we can get a sense in terms of that, also a financial plan, how long will it take uh, for Umkhalakwena uh, in its implementation of the plan? to arrive at the point where they will have a budget that is fully funded. Those were the aspects and issues that did not come out clearly in, 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 in the presentation chair. Uh, while I'm taking a breather and drinking water, I might have to come back because there are more issues, but on top of my head, all the issues that I'm raising now, it's what I could grasp on top of my head because my notes are disorganized. As you can see, I'm holding a lot of papers here. Uh, thank you for your time and opportunity. Uh, 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 and my apologies for arriving late. Leaders are not uh, late, they were delayed, Chair. I suka. Let's proceed. 
Uh, can I hand over to the mayor, uh, maybe the administrator, then if the DG, DDG, I, I believe in the HOD want to say something before the MEC of Treasury, if he's going to say something, and then the MEC of Coxta on this matter of Mkhalaguan. In that order, I believe the HOD now could have got a medication she might be better. She told me during the day she was going to see the doctor. Let's proceed in that order, Mayor and Tim. Thank you, uh, Honorable Ms. I mean, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, and good evening. Where are you? Uh, what I will start you? on the Mayor. By... Mayor, oh. Mayor Mapimela, okay, we want to you. see your face. I'm here. I'm I'm here. I'm okay. here. I'm here, Honorable. Long time. You saw my face. You hey, must keep it on. Evening. Keep it on. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Chair. I just want to clarify on the issue of uh, the issue raised by Councillor Maeba that. Uh, we are the council that accepted the intervention uh, from the provincial executive council. And I want to make an emphasis here, Chair, that since the administrator or the head of intervention uh, started to work in the municipality, we saw a, a serious breakthrough. You can check the report to date and the, 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 compare the report of to date and the previous report. You will see there's a serious, serious uh, 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 changes. And what Councillor Maeva is raising, because it's part of the council, we, we, I want to suggest that, because I don't want to be seen uh, exchanging words here before the, the committee. We will write the report, and I believe the administrator is here, will also indicate uh, his observation in the council, uh, honorable chairperson. But yes, there's some, some of the councillors that are not accepting the work the administrator is doing in the council, which the very same council has adopted uh, the terms of preference of the administrator, which for us, we, we believe, the administ administrator is doing well. And the issue of the MEC that, uh, and the administrator that they're conniving with some of the either councillors or the office of the mayor in the, that's not true. We must speak it here, uh, honorable chairperson, that uh, the work that has been performed by the administrator really has assisted the municipality a lot. We have seen, uh, imp as implementing the issue of consequences management, and uh, which before it was it was not happening in the in the in the municipality. And I don't want to say some councillors connived with um, officials because the head of intervention is doing the work that some of the officials are not happy, and uh, they believe they they must connive with the councillors so that during the council uh, the head of intervention will be insulted and will be threatened, which is not the thing that is good, uh, the, the thing that we can report here, but uh, the way Councillor Maeba has raised the issue here, to me, I feel, uh, Chairperson, that uh, I must be given a chance where I will write a, a full detailed report on the, the, the work done uh, from the council side by the by the administrator. And the speaker also is here, will maybe add and uh, indicate his observation uh, since the administrator is in the municipality. Thank you, Chair. Administrator? Can I? Oh. You need to put your video on. Mine is on. It's not on. So is the speaker? Yes. Oh, chair. speaker. The administrator will fall, come after you. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, good evening, Beggy. Long time. Uh, 
Shepherds. Hey, please, 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 there's no baby here. Uh, can you respond uh, to Honorable Habeva? Honorable, honorable, honorable Habeva, good evening. Only, uh, 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 you can't be doing that. He's not the only attendee of this meeting, Speaker. Proceed. No, I'm still coming. I'm still coming. No, I'll no, you're with still time. Oh, yeah, we're still of... time. <laughs> well, I'm waiting Proceed. back. Thank yes. you very much. And good evening, all of you, members of COCTA and Members of the provincial government, both both Cox, Coxa and uh, and and and, uh, and Treasure. Let me start by saying uh, we we do have uh, confidence in the in the processes of intervention by the provincial government. I don't believe there is a, 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 a councillor who can question the role of the intervention leader. While we adopted a, a, a terms of reference guided by section 139.1b, we, we, we adopted a terms of reference and the man is op operating along that line. But let me address a number of questions that has been raised. But I will start with the first one of the agenda. We need to accept Jefferson that councillors are still struggling to open their budget in relation to looking at uh, 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 items that are appearing on the agenda. They're still struggling. I'm not blaming Councillor Maya by when he's complaining about not seeing some of the items. He's not the only person who's not seeing the items. We are helping them every day so that they can be able to attend and to, to understand this thing of virtual. Uh, some of them, they don't understand how to, they don't know how to open their gadget. But let me go to an issue of the municipality that is dysfunctional. This question was asked in the morning. I like to state categorically clear that uh, since the inception of uh, in, in, uh, uh, intervention leader in February, we have improved a lot. And uh, when one may look into the trend in which uh, 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 communities are, dis are shown dissatisfaction in the previous years as compared to uh, 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 the current one, we can see that uh, the municipality, through the, 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 the provincial intervention, provincial government with the intervention leader, we are, we are doing uh, uh, exactly fine for now. And the, there is a question that has been raised in relation to whether uh, Mr. Mashama it has been reverted back to his old position and what are that position. It has been reverted back to a building caretaker. The position that has been reverted is a building caretaker uh, uh, from, from uh, uh, a deputy manager, uh, 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 a corporate support services. And one other thing is that uh, we, we, we tried by all means, or we have implemented uh, nearly every recommendation by the public protector, every uh, 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 piece of remedial action, including judicial review. That is part of the remedial action we put uh, uh, by, by, by the public project. One other thing is the council will have resolved that uh, based on the, based Chair. on the- on, on... Chair. Who's Chair calling the- Yes. It's Mpumza. Can the speak, no. can speak of council speak to the mic? Okay. Thanks, Jay. Um, Can you stand still? Sit still, uh, Councillor Matevula. Sit still. Don't move around. Okay. Thank you very yes. much. Yes. Yes. Proceed. Yeah. I was indicating that with regard to a, a remedial action by the public protector, we we implemented a, a nearly everything. We also went further to say that. We, we gave the municipal manager to implement section 32 and section 173 of municipal finance management act in relation to whoever formed part of that uh, irregular appointment of Gaumashamaid. Of Gaw Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to report that uh, the issues that have been raised in relation to 
to saying that uh, things are not getting better. I don't want to disagree with, 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 the, with, with, with members of COPTA, but things are getting better. Yeah. When you can, when you look into uh, uh, the, the process that are being followed for now in relation to adhering to our, our, our itinerary, in relation to having our, uh, holding our conference, we are adhering to, to our itinerary as adopted by this council. When uh, uh, issue that says that we are not adhering to that, is, I don't want to say it's lie, but it, it can't be correct to say that we are not holding our councils in terms of our itinerary. We are doing, we are doing exactly fine with the help of intervention. Let me stop there. I'll come back again when uh, uh, I'll check other questions. And, and can you go and take your jacket? Isn't that your at home? Stop coming I'm to not meetings. I'm my office. And how do you come to meetings with Orlando Pirates T-shirts? This is a formal meeting speaker, and you're not doing it for the first time. I don't know what's wrong with you. I felt I need to reprimand you here in this platform. Uh, you sorry, like? Uh, yeah. Let, 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 let's proceed, uh, Administrator. Administrator. Uh, you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members. Uh, MECs and the colleagues. Let me just start by saying that uh, the, from the, on behalf of the intervention team, we welcome criticisms, uh, criticism, constructive criticism built, and it will also help the municipality to grow. Uh, I'm not going to repeat on what the Honorable Mayor and the Speaker have already indicated, but I just have to also give an indication that uh, as, as intervention uh, head or the team, we also depend on the capacity of the officials and senior managers to do our work. So if we get uh, full cooperation from everybody, like we're getting from the almost uh, the majority of councillors there, I think we'll be able to achieve uh, the prop, uh, the, our objectives. But uh, so far, I I'm not going to dwell on much on what uh, Honorable Maepa has, has indicated, but um, I'm just singling out uh, three of them on promoting sound financial management. Uh, what we are doing uh, as, as our task, and I can, I can well indicate that uh, we are no longer paying uh, suppliers that have not done the work. We are doing, we are with the help of the MISA and also with the help of internal audit, we are doing all we can to ensure that we, we pay the invoices for, for the services that have been rendered. So with regard to the 2.7 million that uh, they are to, uh, the Honorable Maipa is talking about, what, when we receive invoices, especially for water cutting, they have uh, each and every areas where they are going, they are getting signature. is either the ward committee, or specific residents or even councillors are signing off to indicate that indeed the tracks have delivered there uh, in those. When we get those invoices, we look at it, we assess those, 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 those signatures, and also we assess whether the, the kilometers that were, 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 were indicated there are, are reasonable. You see, the, the most important things that we need to rectify on this one is the rate is the 20, 27 run per kilometers currently what we are doing as a municipality is that uh, we have uh, issued out the tender on water cutting and we are going to ensure that uh, the the rates that we are going to agree with the, the service providers are reasonable or, or, or are reasonable because currently the 27 rand per kilometer is the one that is making sure that uh, that rate is, is high. 
And people, they must remember that uh, we've got 176 villages and they are far apart. And, and sometimes when you look at the 2.7 million, you also need to look at the number of trucks that particular service providers is having. You'll find that they, uh, on average, they are having five, five trucks and the distance from the source of water to the villages, they, they, they differ. That is why most, some of the trucks are, are, having, are, are being paid such an exorbitant amount. But what we're doing currently is that uh, we have requested the internal audit to audit all of them. All the invoices that, uh, especially the COVID invoices, so we'll be waiting for the, the result of the internal audits to, to check if indeed uh, those uh, uh, amount that we have paid were, were, were reasonable. So another issue that uh, I just wanted to touch on was with regard to uh, the legal opinion uh, that uh, Honorable Maipa is talking about. I, I've requested that legal opinion because uh, in terms of the terms of reverence, that, which is very clear, all, all, all the reports that goes to council, I must sign them off. I must see to it, start to check whether they are all there in terms of the policy, a uh, legal prescript uh, compliance. What happened on that uh, particular uh, report that resulted on expunging the, 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 the suspension of, 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 of the municipal manager was that uh, uh, I've raised it even before the council. I've indicated that uh, I don't think it is proper because that report was not uh, processed procedurally. I have not seen that report. And when I look at the report, because I'm the one, the, t the team that raised the allegations, we were supposed to be interviewed. We were not interviewed. And there were other important documents that the, the investigators have requested from us. Those investigators were at that point in time when they produced the report. We, we, those report, those, uh, uh, POE were still with us. And they, uh, they submitted the report to council with finding without uh, a, a portfolio of evidence. It's only a summarized version. So we needed a detailed report. As of now, even now, we don't have the detailed report so that we can satisfy ourselves that uh, indeed it, the, 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 the investigation was thorough. So that is why I needed uh, the legal opinion because that is the crux of the intervention. If we don't do it because otherwise they are just going to smuggle the reports to cancel without us seeing it. Uh, that, I think that is why we need that. It's important for us to, to seek legal uh, opinion from, from COXA because those are, and I'm, I'm, I'm surprised why Honorable Maepa could not even identify that because it, it was clearly that uh, that report was not thorough, which was, in, according to my opinion, uh, affected, uh, uh, affected individuals who were not interviewed. In, in my initial allegation report, I've mentioned people that have indicated that there was interference in terms of the supply chain. That investigator did not interview those, those people. That was my, 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 my concern about that, 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 that report. But in general, uh, uh, just to answer whether are we still on, on course, there are several other uh, key performance indicators that we still have to, to finalize like a job evaluation and organogram because of the fact that uh, we lost time during the, the, the COVID. Because in terms of the organogram, we, you need to be able to intensively consult internal stakeholders. Otherwise, if you rush it, you are going to have a situation where even the, the labor unions rejected it. And the same applies to job evaluation. We have, we have done a very considerable uh, uh, 
considerable progress in terms of those two. The other key element of, 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 of our success is that we needed to make sure that we finalize the placement policy because there are people that are misplaced in that particular municipality. If we have not finalized, uh, for us to ensure that there is sustainability in the municipality, we need to place people at the right places. So that uh, policy is, is, is the key. Because let me give you one classical example. There are people who, are, who could be able to be assigned to the internal audit, but Colleagues, can you hear him or it's only me? We can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? You didn't hear the last part. Can you repeat it? So I was indicating that the, 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 the placement policy is the key to the sustainability of the municipality because it will ensure that uh, people, right people are being placed in the right places and position so that they, they, can, we can, they can be optimally used within the municipality. And I was also indicating that we have just said uh, the council has just approved the, the financial recovery plan. And that financial recovery plan has got phases. Phase one is the risk phase. Second phase is a stabilization. So we need that intervention to be there when the two phases are, are being implemented, because those are the key phases uh, uh, that needed. The other issues is on the annual financial statement. Uh, I think I've, I have received the report from our team that uh, we, are, we have reviewed the annual financial statements, but not all, all the notes or the advice were taken, and which is a very uh, serious concern from, from our team, that uh, we, we, this, in this case, our advice was not uh, taken into consideration in terms of finalizing the annual financial statement. There will, there will still be errors on, on that uh, annual financial statement. But uh, generally, we, we, will, we, are, we are saying that uh, 12, 12 months is not enough, especially in the municipalities that have had some uh, serious problems in the past. So the other issues that needs to be uh, uh, considered as well is the service delivery because it was not a part and parcel of our, our, our initial terms of reverence. But because there the, the were project stoppages and non-payments of subcontractors, we had to come in so that we will be able to, uh, uh, to un unblock those, those uh, projects. But the service delivery is one of the issues that uh, we have, I have raised with the PMT that uh, we needed to make sure that at least we have, we, we, we should form a service delivery uh, a war room so that we can ensure that we, we fast track the, the delivery of services to the communities. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Okay, then you didn't respond to the regular expenditure question. Yeah, I, I think the most of the uh, the question will be, uh, I think, will be uh, responded by the, the CFO. And if the CFO is not there, uh, well, my team, who is responsible for for the finance, is is also she's also in attendance. Uh, will be able to answer it. But as an administrator, it, you said you sign off documents to cancel. Yes. The yes. question was that, what has cancel done with the matter? According to you as an administrator, what is the issue? What is the status of those yeah, matters? The, 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 
most of the the, 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 the uh, last week I was not there. I was I was I was sick. They were supposed to be the the MPEG was supposed to to submit those reports to council. I'm not sure whether those reports were indeed submitted to council or not. That is why I'm saying that uh, the, the 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 CFO will be able to advise us on, on that one. CFO. Administrator, where is the CFO? MM, can you, you are under administration, but then your responsibility is not taken away by the administration. Can you respond to the issue as raised, MM? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, good evening, uh, members and MECs. Uh, from my side, in terms of the question at hand, in terms of what did we manage to take to uh, and table before council? Indeed, we looked into the report as prepared by MPEC uh, as a committee, and it was agreed together with the audit committee that we we'll look into all the expenditures uh, stating back from 2014 uh, up until 2016 17, where all those expenditures, especially around the fruitless and wasteful expenditure, and uh, together with the unauthorized expenditure, that it will be written off. And um, what was then also taken to council was 17 and 18, 19 financial years only on irregular and um, wasteful and, and, and fruitless and wasteful expenditure that we managed to write off. Um, however, I must indicate that we had a challenge throughout the financial year where some of the documentation were had to be uh, requested by uh, the law enforcement agency. And as a result, our MPEC as a committee couldn't uh, uh, also look into those uh, reports or the documentation in order to investigate uh, the, the areas of irregular expenditure that might have occurred, especially in 1819 financial year. Therefore, in terms of 1819 financial years and authorized expenditure, we did not do anything due to the limitation in terms of the documentation. Um, thank you, Chair. Can you rename your gadget? You are not Galaxy Note 9, eh? Rename your gadget, please. I will check. The CFO. Uh, HOD, you want to say something? Yes, I see you are on. HOD, do my decision. Thank you, Chairperson, and good evening to the members of the committee, um, the MECs and colleagues. And uh, Chairperson, I'm battling with my video. Um, it's always on and off. I hope um, it's on at this point. And if it's not on, my apologies. We can't see you. Ouch. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm battling on this side. I'm technologically disadvantaged. My sincere apology, Chair. Okay. So then, um, I will I will respond on quite a number of issues. Some of them I thought the municipalities, especially the MM, I thought she will touch on those, but I'll I'll respond to those issues. The 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 matter that was asked by Honorable um, Hussein, the incomplete uh, Mokobani complex for 25 million, that that official was ultimately suspended. And I, I think that's the same official whose car was confiscated by the Hawks, which was um, in the media. And the information we got as a department was that the official had actually since left um, the municipality. So um, we will then follow up because it's a matter that has been handled by the law enforcement agencies. We'll just follow up with the municipality as to whether they have started processes to recoup the money. Um, with regards to that uh, project. Chairperson, um, the, the Honor, Honorable Pumza, Mpumza 
um, asked the question and said our our presentation with that of MISA, um, there seem to be some inconsistencies. Um, Chair, there are no inconsistencies. What um, the presentation of MISA this morning was saying is that um, I think what we're saying here, the, the intervention by MISA happened long before the, inter the 139 intervention. So it didn't come during the 139 intervention. We had already picked up the challenges, the slow supply chain processes, and that's the reason why, why um, strengthening slow uh, supply chain management processes was one of the key performance areas for the head of intervention. Um, the forensic investigations that were conducted by the municipality, they did not happen um, currently. We, they had five um, of the forensic investigations that were investigated quite a number of years, uh, over a number of years. And when they were expected to table those uh, presentations, their understanding was that um, the recommendations of their uh, reports were actually tabled to previous administration. And uh, unfortunately, they could not loco locate the records or the council uh, resolutions to that effect. And subsequently, they then had to retable to council. So five of them have since been retabled, except for one which was conducted by KPMG. And we are also following up on the matter, wanting to understand the reasons of withdrawing the matter before council and whether if they are convinced that they, it was previously tabled, do they have the council resolution and where the council's recommendations implemented. That's the only one that is outstanding. The rest were tabled, some were referred to MPEG for further investigation and some were referred for implementation. Chair, with regards to the report, <coughs> excuse me, with regards to the report of the public protector, and I think I want to correct what Councillor Mayepa said. Councillor Mayepa is referring to uh, Jabu, Mr. Jabu Mashamaite um, returning back to work within two weeks and by insinuating that it's a matter that was handled by the intervention. Now, the, there were two separate processes in the municipality. First, long before the intervention, Jabu Mashamaite was suspended for two weeks, and that is what resulted in the, the confusion or the challenges between the municipality and the MM and ultimately the MM being on leave. And subsequently, um, during the time when the senior, the manager for corporate services was acting, Mr. Jabu Mashamaite's DC process was concluded and he was brought back to work. But now in terms of the public protector's report, where it says the appointment of Mr. Mashamaite is irregular and the, the report is actually making quite a number of recommendations. Some of those recommendations have since been uh, implemented after the report and the implementation plan were tabled uh, and adopted by council. The first one was to, re to actually reverse the appointment or promotion of Mr. Mashamaite and start the process of recovering the money. So as we speak, Mr. Mashamaite is back in his original position. Now the process of recovering the money also from the former acting MM has been was started by the former uh, acting MM who is currently um, back in his position as the manager. So that 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 those recommendations by the public protector chair are currently being implemented. The, there's also an issue with regards to the the. Okay, I've covered the forensic investigation, uh, the supply chain. Chairperson, um, the, the other matter that was raised by Councillor Mayepa that talks to the confusion that was caused by the head of intervention during the processes of the IDP um, with regards to the organogram and all that. The matter was never brought to the attention of the department and we could have actually acted on the matter. We could have investigated or requested further clarity and be able to assist the municipality in making sure 
that they get the correct information. But we will follow up on the issue that he has raised because then he's saying up to this point, he still has not received any response from the municipality or the head of intervention. So we'll attend to the matter. And he's also at, uh, 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 raising a matter where he's requesting the department to investigate the water provisioning that is costing the municipality two million per month. We'll attend to that. The legal opinion chair, yes, um, uh, the, the, the head of intervention did actually um, touch on that. And I want to add on what he has actually raised. Two things that actually happened. When this process unfolded, he wrote to the mayor, raising his frustrations and uh, discomfort with the process and dissatisfaction. He further wrote to the MEC because it's his responsibility, he reports to the MEC, raising the same issues. Three days later, the mayor wrote to the MEC, raising the same challenges and frustrations and, and concerns and requesting the MEC to intervene. On the basis of the request from the municipality, the MEC then decided to seek legal opinion to determine as to whether the processes that were followed were actually proper or improper. And that matter has since been concluded. We will take the matter uh, before the council as we normally do. Anything that happens to the municipality and a decision is taken at the provincial level, it's presented to the PMT or Troika and exco and ultimately to cancel and we will do exactly that chair i also want to correct um the information where um the, which was raised by um councillor maeva chairperson we we as the province we went back to the municipality when we were going to present allegations that were leveled against the MM in terms of what was happening in the municipality, the first thing we did, and as I indicated that we meet all the structures before we meet the council, the first thing that we did in all the, the structures up to the level of the council, we provided them with progress on the intervention as at, at that point. And they all had information that was giving them comfort to say there is some level of progress that is being made as a result of intervention before we could get into the allegations that were leveled against the mayor. So the information to say um, today that um, intervention is not working, um, unfortunately, it was not, it has not yet been brought, brought through the proper channels, either directly to the MEC or directly to the premier, because it's the province that is intervening uh, before it is presented or before it is presented to the portfolio committee. So we will still expect if the Mr. Uh, Councillor Maepa still holds the same view, we will expect that those matters should be actually um, submitted properly in writing to the relevant structures and register the dis, uh, discomfort with regards to the intervention, Chairperson. The, the issues that were raised by Honorable uh, uh, and um, that talks to the land claims and land invasion. I will request the municipality, the MM, to respond to those issues. If I've left out some of the issues, Chairperson, and I think I've also touched on some of the issues that you raised. Um, the suspension that happened in 2018, I will re request the MM to respond to those issues. And hopefully, um, if anything, there's anything that I left on the side of the province, I will request the DDG to assist. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, HOD. Can we allow the DDG to deal with the other outstanding issues? DDG. And thank you, MM, for renaming your gadget. That's how we want to see you. Um, thanks very much. Uh, th thanks very yeah. much. Thanks very much, uh, Chair. I think that the HOD and, and, and uh, Mr. Bushiro, the head of the intervention team, have actually uh, responded to all the issues. There's nothing on my side to add for now. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone, before I go to the two MECs, who wants to say something? Uh, yes, Chair. Yes. Oh. Yes. Is, uh, no, 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 no. 
I, I won't have, because there are questions that are not adequately responded to uh, the technical question, uh, MM. We have thought either yourself or the, the administrator will deal with that. Seems to be, the question seems to be unanswered. Who's uh, Who is this person? Can I know? Because you didn't put your 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 name. Who are you? I see you. Oh, my hand was up, uh, chair, and then I'll come in. It's Pukunzi from Treasure. No, no. Is it this Mukonyane Malusi? I've seen you, uh, 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 Mr. Pukunzi. I've seen you. I've noted you. You'll come immediately after the MM. But there's somebody with the gadget called Mukonyane Malusi. His 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 microphone is on. Can I plead with him to mute his microphone, please? Then allow the, the MM, then uh, uh, the D will come in from Treasury. Then that's why I said, can I see the officials who want to respond before I allow the two NECs to comment on these matters? So can I allow you, MM, to proceed? OK. Um... Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I just wanted to also add on the issue of um, the public protector's mm -hmm. report where the HOD has left off. Uh, what she reported on, it is uh, the true reflection of exactly what transpired. However, I wanted to also add in relation to uh, the incumbent uh, who therefore had the right um, to, to take the matter, or he chose to take the matter forward to, to be presented before the courts. So uh, Jabu Mashamaite did take the public protector's report to seek um, remedial uh, action in terms of the review. And unfortunately, or fortunately, the, the court therefore uh, granted him the, the the review of the public protector's report. And what is currently happening is that we were therefore advised that we must de then set aside the council resolution up until the public protector's report is finalized in terms of the review as, as requested by Jabuma Shamayit. So where we are currently, he is back in his a deputy manager corporate services with full pay and we are just awaiting the the matter to be finalized and and we will therefore take other steps as a municipality but i'm not sure which areas did i miss or maybe that the hod wanted me to respond to perhaps honorable chair you can assist me to to get to those ones because i thought she she managed to cover all the aspects Um, maybe let me also touch on the land claim chair. Yesterday, the very same question was there, uh, was posed by the honorable member, and it was indicated that um, we had several claims that were made previously within the municipality dating back from 1998, and all of those claims have not yet been finalized. And we are indicating that in terms of the land invasion, Indeed, during the COVID-19, there were some land invasions. However, we have since managed to clear uh, the illegal uh, of, of uh, putting infrastructure illegally in those areas. The area that was identified uh, as invaded by the community was in ex extension 15. And um, there was also a question that was saying uh, do we have land available? Yes, the municipality still has the land available. Uh, we have approximately about 10, um, 10, 000, is 10 000 square square meters available for commercial and approximately uh, 6,000 square meters available also for residential at this point in time, which is still available for development within the, the municipal area. Uh, thank you, Chair. I would like to be directed if there's any other question that one has missed. Thank you. Can we then ask uh, Mr. Pukunzi from uh, 
treasury to respond on issues he feels they need to attend to? Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Honorable uh, Chairperson and uh, the Honorable uh, Members and uh, also the MECs and the, the Mayor and the Councillors. Uh, just a quick one from uh, uh, Honorable Mpumza was around uh, the reliance of Section 71 and also uh, Section uh, 41 reports. Uh, these reports are uploaded in the uh, National Treasury Local Government Database, and uh, that is where then uh, we all draw uh, these reports and analyze and uh, analyze them. Uh, in terms of reliance, uh, uh, in most of the time, uh, we try then to uh, engage municipalities after we have analyzed the reports because uh, of the uh, system uh, M4, uh, whereby uh, you will find that the information is not captured correctly and, and so on. But there is training that is going on uh, with municipalities together with the uh, system vendors uh, in just trying to, to then get this report to be, to be credible and then accurate. Uh, we also uh, issue on a monthly basis uh, assessment uh, reports on these uh, uh, submissions by municipalities uh, so that then we can then improve uh, moving forward. Uh, Honorable Hatebe raised the issue around uh, uh, the financial recovery plan in terms of uh, uh, the, the time uh, frames that are set. Uh, to implement this uh, financial recovery plan. Uh, together with the municipality uh, and Hoxta and National Treasury, uh, we have put a period of uh, six to 12 months uh, to, to the around uh, and the municipality. Uh, as we have seen, we are fortunate that this municipality does not actually have uh, 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 SCOM accounts and also the, the water boards and, and so on. So, so it becomes a little bit much more easier to, to actually schedule some of the creditors as we try to improve uh, on, uh, on a revenue collection in the municipality. And that financial recovery plan is available. I think uh, it can be shared uh, with the honorable members, but just to mentioned that in the main we look into the financial rescue how we can actually assist the municipality but what is important is around then to stabilize and to sustain uh, the finances of the municipality uh, moving forward the, the funding plan that was adopted last week monday by the council is also in line with the financial recovery plan we are putting ourselves a period of uh, uh, one year, one financial year, uh, just to implement this financial recovery plan. But at the same time, we improve uh, on how we uh, capture information on uh, M score, uh, our our uh, in, uh, the information that is in our Excel that is also talk uh, to the information that is in our in our uh, uh, M score in the system itself. I think. Uh, those were the issues which were raised that I thought uh, I must just touch on because uh, the MM did not talk to. Thank you very much. Uh, what, what, what's your title at Provincial Treasury, if I may ask? Uh, what's your title? Oh, I'm a DDG for Sustainable Resource Management in the. Treasury. Yes, DDG for Sustainable. Resource, resource management. management. Yeah. I would have called you DDG Pukunsi. I couldn't do that <laughs> because I was not <laughs> so sure you. whether. <laughs> no, now I know you are DDG. Okay, no, thanks. No, so, thank you so much. Can I hand over to MEC Sikwati if there's anything, you, something you want to say on Mukhalakwena? Uh, thanks, thanks, Chair. <clears throat> Just to say that, Chair. I think we, we need to appreciate that uh, there is uh, some form of progress that uh, we are actually registering in Mukhalakwena. 
because uh, part of what was more important was to set up systems within the municipality and make sure that the municipality is able to run as an uh, um, as a going concern because uh, i think uh, before the intervention all the systems have collapsed and i think that is what will actually that is after having put all the systems in place hence certain areas that have been targeted that we had thought they'll be game changers Mrs. Squatty, can we see you, please? Oh, yes. yes we want uh, to see your face. And South Africa wants to see you, too. There oh. we go. There we yes. go, Mrs. Squatty. Thank you, Chair. I was saying that uh, what was more important was to make sure that we are able to uh, bring back the municipality on a uh, sound footing to make sure that their systems are in place because part of what was crippling the municipality is that all the systems have collapsed and therefore we had uh, identified certain areas for intervention which we thought that uh, if we intervene in those areas um, we should be able to have the municipality to go back to its uh, uh, footing but also make sure that uh, it becomes sustainable because if you look at it most of the things that were happening was because the system or systems that were in place had actually collapsed and they corrupted by what was the, what was happening and if you have that then for you create a, a huge chaos within the municipality we will only be able to start seeing more progress that is tangible after having set up uh, those systems and ensured that uh, everyone is able to follow a particular system in terms of people uh, undertaking or executing their tasks. You look at the uh, issues of uh, um, uh, budgeting and reporting, issues of uh, M-score support, issues of revenue management, issues of supply chain management, which is one of the biggest uh, and major problems that we face in the municipality uh, because of uh, non-compliance, and so on, which had ultimately led to the unwanted expenditure, which is something that uh, we are also, as part of the RFP, uh, trying to make sure that uh, we are able to ensure that uh, the municipality is able to uh, follow uh, 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 the supply chain uh, uh, management processes and so on, issues of assets and uh, audit support, which will make sure that uh, the municipality uh, does uh, as expected, particularly in terms of fair accounting. But I think we must also admit that uh, we, the intervention um, had uh, some form of uh, limitations, particularly in terms of information that some of the colleagues had already mentioned that uh, if you go into an institution and you find that uh, a lot of uh, uh, information or documentation is not uh, really available, it becomes a problem to deal with uh, certain uh, issues, um, uh, particularly if you want to expedite uh, such matters. So that had actually slowed uh, some of uh, the processes in other areas, particularly where you are supposed to process uh, uh, certain matters and so on. But we believe that uh, with uh, the, uh, the base that you are laying, but also the foundation that is being laid by the intervention, it should be able to make sure that the municipality is a backward food because this is one municipality that we believe has got huge, huge uh, um, potential in terms of uh, contributing to the well being of the people of the province, but also in terms of growth of the province. So, we, as we deal with it, we needed to understand that we are dealing with a municipality that is very strategic and therefore. Whatever that we do need to be systematic, but also make sure that when the intervention team leaves, you leave a municipality that will be able to stand on its own. And what we are then doing is to show to ensure that there is capacity that is left within that municipality. The intervention actually uh, is uh, ended. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Those are what that is what I wanted to raise uh, in short. Thanks. Thank you, MEC Squati. Can I hand over to you, MEC Makamu now? Yeah. 
Yes, there you go. Thanks, Chairperson, and greetings to honorable members of the Portfolio Committee, and the greetings to MEC Squad, officials of the department, uh, Treasury and Coxter, and the uh, Mayor, Speaker, and the officials from the municipality, and uh, Mr. Wichero, the administrator. The majority of questions have been attended to, except to say uh, there is one question which I think was never attended to by Honorable Hadeb, which was seeking to want clarity to say, do we have an implementation plan or action plan that will be able to say, we have completed these milestones and we are happy by this time. And I think uh, DDG and HOD might just missed that. But the fact is that we do have the implementation plan, which was canvassed with the stakeholders within the municipality on the areas we needed to do work. But it's true that uh, that implementation plan, like Mr. Bushela spoke about, did not go according to the plan because at some point we were to uh, scale down the work because of the COVID uh, regulations. And then now we are in nine months in implementation and those things are not necessarily fulfilled. The question that will be begged to ask the chairperson will be, the intervention is meant for 12 months in terms of the legislation. Will we have covered everything or turn around the situation in Mukhalakwena to be able to answer uh, whether we will leave the municipality? It's a matter that we are still going to look into. But Honorable Hussein raised an issue specifically and technically, and nobody tried to answer the question. And I'm worried about that question he raised, whether there is a company that is involved uh, in uh, supplying security, but also doing some other work, has got relations with some officials within the municipality. I must say, as the MEC, I'm getting it for the first time here. I'm not necessarily aware, but because it was raised in this meeting, we'll be able to follow up and request to get information about it. And I think uh, it's a concern. And even the details uh, of the COVID challenges, I think Mr. Wichelo should be able to provide. I, get, I heard him talking about uh, kilometers, the rate which but the question was to say, it's so high level that it talks about the 58 million that has been spent on COVID uh, procurement for water, and that needs to be attended to. I think that will also have to provide answers. But I must answer these questions which were asked by Councillor Mayeb. One of the issues says the MEC can stoop so low and attend the council meeting. You know, I must remind him that the council in a municipality is the highest uh, decision making structure. It's not low, it's the highest, it's not low. You must know that particular part. But like the HOD was saying, I was attending even PMT to provide and take the municipality on board including at the time the decision was taken by the executive council just to inform them how the we arrived at the decision i went to the council not once and i must clarify that there is no need to do witch hunt there are almost 27 municipalities in this province and we should be able to support all of them so when there's something like uh, happening in a particular municipality which is not done correctly as the MEC responsible for local government in this province will intervene and as such we are doing that even in Karakwe. So we are not doing any witch hunt uh, chairperson and the people who does wrong must not be protected by anybody for whatever reason because if we have people who, that, who do that we're not going to get these things right because consequence management must be applied consistently, but as well, 
objectively so that we can be able to go deep down to the challenge. So we are doing that and we think where there are issues. When we went to council, we said we are going to report to the exco. If there is something, because there is an allegation in this meeting, and I can say uh, 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 the report presented by the DDG is a report from the Department of Cox, which I have signed it off personal, and I have taken an oath that I can come to this portfolio and lie. The report before is taken to Cockstar, we present into council for them to input and correct if there's something that they think it's not or over exaggerated in terms of our, what we're doing in the municipality. But I must say, Chairperson, uh, that I concur with MEC Squad to say there is a sign of improvement on some of the areas. It was for the first time that the Council of Mkwalakwena will adopt a report from MPEC during the time of the intervention. It was for the first time that the Council of Mkwalakwena will allow the audit committee to come and address them and present them. It will be clear that whoever uh, 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 is cooperating, and that's what we requested, not only from the internal stakeholders, councillors. We even went to engage other outside stakeholders to work towards making sure that we should be able to engage so that we can improve service delivery. Because that is where the matter lies. He asked about the water provisioning. If the issue that we can be able to do and make sure that the council like the question was asked, and I have not heard anybody in the municipality uh, responding to say, why you prioritize only one project for water, not other than the majority of the uh, projects, because Mukhalakwana is the water service authority. They were supposed to have more. Uh, it's a drought stricken type uh, area, where in boreholes, like one would suggest, cannot necessarily be a proper solution because the area is dry. So I must indicate a chairperson that uh, the Mukhalakwana is taking much of our time as a department to help them support uh, so that they can go out of the situation they find themselves in so that we can help other municipalities. So it's not like we enjoy uh, staying in Mukalakwe and myself, HOD, DDG, going there. It's because the situation was not necessarily right and we're trying to improve. And I can assure you, chairperson and members, as and when we try to put in systems, beneficiaries of wrongdoing will always come in and want to derail the process. And that's what we can be able to see. But uh, we also believe that the law enforcement agency will also assist uh, with whatever it will be taking place in the other areas. Thanks very much. Uh, Thank you, MEC. Do we have follow-ups, colleagues? Yeah, Hussein Chair. Honorable Hussein, who has this got a follow-up? Okay. Let Honorable Hadeve, Honorable Hadeve with an H has got to follow up. Yeah, boo. And Mpumza as well. Yes. Yeah, Chairperson. I've noted you, it's not your turn now. I've noted you, Mpumza. You'll be the last after Hadeve. Now is the turn for Honorable Hussein. Uh, thank you very much. Can I just say, Chair, I, I do appreciate the uh, the response from the MEC, and my my own experience and the impression I get from the MEC is that that he, he is sincerely trying to turn the situation around. Our previous interactions with him have also been very positive, so I really appreciate his openness and his frankness and uh, the honesty in which he 
he addresses the portfolio committee. Um, MEC, may I just say that I've sent you the information in relation to that security company. I've sent it via the committee secretary to Shireen will forward it to you. And if you go back to our last interaction, the one that we had in parliament, and the the questions that that some of us and uh, put to Mr. Masha Maite uh, in relation to a company called KTS Trading, if I'm not mistaken, the owner of that company uh, on on that contract, which was a cleaning contract of some sort, seems to be the same owner of this security providing company, and so that is the the context in which I raised that issue. Uh, and you're right, none of the officials in the municipality addressed the question, but uh, I will appreciate if you would look into that matter further, because there is certainly that, uh, that issue that came before the court and the ruling will give you some very clear insight to exactly what is going on there. Then, Chairperson, um, just on another matter, uh, the question I raised around uh, the mayor's uh, Mercedes Benz, I didn't seem to get a response to that unless I've lost the signal along the way and the question was answered. But if it was, I apologize, but I don't recall receiving a response from the mayor on that matter in particular. So I will appreciate if she will please address it if she hasn't already. And just a reminder, the question was, um, how much exactly did she spend on hiring that Mercedes Benz uh, vehicle for how long? And how can she justify that level of expenditure when the rules provide for an upper limit? And also, given the circumstances that the municipality is in, in terms of its struggling financial affairs, that she can see it fit to spend that amount of money on a vehicle. Uh, the last thing I want to raise, Chairperson, is the issue around the councillors who are doing business with the municipality. Um, and it seems to me that uh, and that that they that they this matter came up the last time around when we were in in the municipality. Um, there was a report, if I'm not mistaken, on the number of councillors that were doing business with the municipality, but it doesn't look like anything has come out of that. So, can we just get some feedback on exactly what the status of that report is? How many councillors uh, in total have been doing business with the municipality, and has there been any action? Uh, taken against those municipality, uh, those uh, councillors. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honourable Hussein. Honourable Adewan. Thank you, Honourable Chairperson. Um, I think the MEC tried to come close to my question, but not exactly, Chair. The question was in relation to the adopted financial recovery plan, which includes the funding plan. Now, the question was, Chair, for the plan to be fully implemented, uh, how long does the municipality need? And the response was a year. And then I, I had made a follow-up to say, Chair, within that year, there are certain milestone projection that you would achieve. For an example, uh, maybe the plan might contain something uh, uh, like within the first three months uh, within our financial plan, we need to make sure that certain uh, 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 issues in relation to systems that relates to uh, detection and prevention of a uh, 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 fruitless and wasteful expenditure, those systems ought to be in place, or it will talk about uh, ensuring that uh, our asset register is up to date. So I'm saying, what are the very key and strategic milestone projections within your financial recovery plan? For you to be able to measure success, because you won't wake up after a year to realize that certain things are not done. So if I, I even said, please just not, not in detail, just give us a synopsis of what, what does your uh, plan entail. Now, the issue about the funding plan chain is in relation to the current budget that is not funded, which is in contravention 
of the Municipal Finance Management Act. So um, did I hear the MEC correctly to say it will require six months for the municipality to fully implement the funding plan? Does that mean in the next financial year, the budget that will be passed by the municipality will be fully funded? Lastly, uh, a chair, uh, in relation to the standing invite of administrators to the finance committee, earlier today we were told that uh, is not being uh, implemented, which is part of the terms of reference. I'd like to get an understanding why there has not been a standing invite for the administrator to sit uh, within the financial committee. In closing, we need to give credit where credit is future. Uh, this committee is not known for applauding the fish for swimming or praising the birds for flying. But indeed, if we listen to all the presentation, they speak in one voice, uh, speak in unison, there is a sense of hope that things are turning around. We, we were there, we, we bear testimony uh, that we left unceremoniously, but we are told now that things are, are, are different. So we would like to applaud the municipality and the administrator to say continue working uh, uh, together uh, for the betterment of our people. We are not doing it for your own jacket, but the, uh, uh, the thousands and the millions of uh, uh, community of Mkhalamukona that voted for you. Uh, we really appreciate your progress and we, from time to time, will call upon you to account on the promise that you have made. Thank you so much, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Hatjeva. Honorable Pomza. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, Chairperson, I have, uh, I have raised the... Uh, oh. Chairperson, I have raised the... Chair, I have raised the issue of... Uh, oops. What's wrong? Honorable Mbumza, can you run away from the micro microphone and then focus on talking? Please. Are you Thank using, you very much. Are you using a cell phone? Thank, th yes, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. Chair, Chair uh, the question that I raised was in relation to uh, of the forensic investigations. Uh, how much uh, is the municipality spent on commissioning uh, these investigations? That, that's what the other question that is outstanding not responded to. Secondly, um, I had raised also to the DG that uh, when she was indicating that there is an improvement, my question was that uh, um, it was the Tamaltas uh, labor relations in the Mukhalekwane municipality, has it been now stabilized? Um, um, to what extent, therefore, is it stabilized in terms of filling in the positions, in terms of the actual um, sour relations that were prevalent when we were there? The, the, the other bunch, uh, critical is uh, those was of a technical nature that uh, the, the the lack of for uh, supporting documentation from the which is frustrating now the work of the intervention as well as the lack of forward planning which has characterized uh, that is uh, the understanding of the mig in the report of which the mc had a concern can we be assured then that uh, the municipality is actually uh, 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 addressing those gaps uh, as part of uh, improving the situation and stabilizing the municipality? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mpumza. 
from me in terms of the financial viability of the municipality. My issue, I want to get an honest feedback from both the administrator and the MM. You are councillors, starting from your mayor up to an ordinary councillor. Are they paying for their services? Are their accounts up to date? because we cannot be expecting people to pay for the services, whereas uh, the, the, the leadership of the municipality is not paying. So are you able to share with us with this committee who's, who's in areas, who's paying, who's not paying, because the municipality also pay salaries for these people. So can you able to, are you able to share with us, the mayor can proudly, can the mayor proudly tell us now that they are in the speaker that their accounts with the municipalities are up to date over to you colleagues thank you. Start, the speaker will start uh, followed by the i see the hod want to speak on this matter as well those are the two ends I'm seeing for now. Speaker, now you are properly dressed, isn't it? Look yeah, at you. <laughs> thank you very much. Mm. Uh, it must never happen again. No more pirate shirts. In yeah, it, it won't happen again, Chair. Okay. Yeah, I need to respond on a number of issues. Uh, Chair, it is true that uh, there was a rented vehicle used by the mayor after she, she was involved in an accident. But I can happily indicate that uh, maybe MM will just clarify as to how much was spent on that uh, 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 rented vehicle. Secondly, Chair, I would like to indicate that there is no councillor currently who's owing the municipality uh, in terms of rate and taxes. We our, mod, our monitoring start with uh, uh, our own councillors so that we can be able to encourage uh, members of the community to pay their services. Uh, as you know, uh, Chair, uh, our municipality is a little bit deep rural, but there are uh, townships that surround the town. But I can proudly say that we are not owing, uh, uh, councillors are not owing the municipality. Thank you, Chair. Are you saying that with authority, Councillor Matebolo? Speaker? Yeah, yes, sure. you can, yes, I'm saying that with authority, unless there is something, but I don't believe because we are busy monitoring. How is your debt collection policy in relates to your public representatives? Uh, in fact, we are not allowed to. Even normal enforcement that you do, there are those who are not paying. And, and we'll look into it, but. Can I ask you of, tomorrow? to print the bills of all the councillors and email yeah, them well, to our committee. Yes, I will, <laughs> yes, I will do exactly that. There are those whose accounts are not up to date. What must we do with you as this committee? I, because I, I people who are saying it are those that whose accounts, when they are due and payable, they, they are paid. In fact, we encourage them that they are not allowed to owe the municipality, the municipality for a period of more than three months. And uh, from where I'm standing, there is no one who's owed, unless there is other development that happened. Do you have that them. report? Do you check it on a regular basis as a speaker of council? Because that's the point I'm trying to bring home to you. Have you seen that that everybody is up to date? Yeah, the last time that I saw, I will I will look at it again. But chair, uh, I want to guarantee now. that there is no one who's owning who's owning the municipality. But I will have to check it again. No, tomorrow give me a statement. It's just it's, it's just a there are not that many. Can, can you send the same things by 10 o'clock to our committee secretary to show yeah, that no you're problem. telling As long as you can provide me with the email address, we'll have to send it. No, they're going to send it to you now on your chat group. Uh, she shouldn't send him the email address on the on the chat there, direct to him personally. Okay. Nobody's owing the municipality. Yeah, from where I'm standing, I don't know anybody's owing the hey. municipality. 
Yeah, cancel us of Mkhalekwena are so exemplary. No, no, I take my head off. We are very five. Okay. That I, I'll show you. MM. MM. Responses to the issues as raised by Honorable Lusen before the HOD. Oh, okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, with regard to uh, the, the security company, unfortunately, also, Chair, I, I, I was not there in the municipality. However, we appreciate the matter being brought to our attention, and we will indeed deal with the matter and, and, and get to the understanding of what led to that mismanagement and irregularity. Uh, and also on the issue of the mayor utilizing um, the rented car, uh, the speaker is correct to indicate that um, subsequent to the mayor being in an accident, uh, we had to hire the car for her. But we'll also note that it is the last financial year where it was also uh, subjected to quite a number of protests internal and external whereby we couldn't even hold a council meeting however we we, we made sure that we speed up uh, the process of ensuring that the insurance uh, uh, pay out and also we ultimately buy the new or a, another car for 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 the mayor we took a while so it was unfortunate that the money had to be spent it was uh, a, in an amount of 250 56,000 that in total that we had to spend on the rented car. And indeed it was unfortunate that due to the situation and environment that we were under uh, late last year in 2019, where we couldn't really finalize the matter because uh, the issue of the buying of the vehicle for the mayor had to be presented before council and we couldn't do it uh, speedily as, 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 as anticipated. Um, with regard to the councillors doing business with the municipality, uh, in terms of the, the report that was issued by the Auditor General, we, it was not indicated. In terms of the findings, uh, there was no councillor that was directly under her name or his name doing business with the municipality. We only found uh, that there was an official, that um, a, a relative, was doing business with the municipality, which was therefore picked up by the Auditor General. Hence, the municipality does not have the system where we are able to detect prior to the completion of the, of the procurement process. But we are confident to report today that we do not have any councillor directly uh, utilizing their uh, credentials or their particulars doing business with the municipality. Um, with regard to the FRP, um, I would really like to take the honorable member through the, the, the FRP, but I seem to be having a challenge with my system we, where I'm requesting that uh, perhaps we can send the FRP directly to Ms. Kasim as soon as uh, we are done with the meeting and, and, and then the member will have an opportunity to go through and check how are we planning to turn around in terms of the of 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 the uh, financial management and sustainability within the municipality? However, I must indicate that uh, there was a lot of work that went into it. Both the Department of Copta and Treasury assisted immensely on the development of the uh, the plan, and we are happy that it's covering all the facets in terms of the uh, financial management starting from our credit control uh, and how do we ensure that we, we, we raise our revenue and the turnaround time in terms of how do we also respond to our communities. Uh, and we're also tapping into the service delivery, especially the areas in which we are able to tap into uh, collecting uh, revenue while we are providing the services and also delivering uh, the services to our community in Mohalagwen. So we are humbly requesting that the, the comprehensive report will therefore be sent through to, to, to honorable members. Uh, with regard to the forensic um, reports which were indicated earlier on, 
uh, they were presented before council. However, uh, in terms of the spending, we'll request that we provide a full comprehensive amount because this forensic uh, investigation reports dating back from 2014 up until 2019. So I would request that also we make available um, uh, the figures to that effect, how much we have spent thus far, uh, so that we are not uh, really um, uh, misrepresenting or, or giving uh, wrong figures. Um, Feeling of the positions thus far in terms of what we had to feel in terms of the positions, I believe it was indicated, uh, which we really appreciate from the uh, intervention side, that they really did a good job in terms of assisting the municipality by ensuring that we absorb the long standing court order that was issued uh, by the Labour Court where there were some um, contract, contract workers who have been within the municipality for a number of years and, and, and they decided to take the municipality to court. And therefore, we managed to then um, negotiate and have bilaterals with the union and ultimately it was agreed that it is time that they become absorbed within the municipality and we are happy to report today that uh, those positions have been uh, absorbed within the, the structure of of, of, of the municipality. Uh, the financial viability paying, I believe this one, the speaker has, has, has provided the response to, but I also wanted to just uh, go back through, uh, through you, Chair, if you allow, in terms of the one water services that we, a uh, water project that the municipality have. I just want to clarify that we have quite a number of uh, water projects within the municipality. And I can report that in terms of other conditional grants that we are being allocated by national departments, uh, we have one project that is uh, two-phased, uh, that is funded by ARBIC, and it is actually supply, it's water reticulation to also supply 38 villages. We also have industrial well field that is also aimed at supplying the water and the I mean, the supplying the town and, and the peri-urban areas that is surrounding the town. The well fields are a project is aimed at um, reticulating and also re-equipping of the boreholes and also ensuring that we get a uh, new water from some of the old uh, abandoned, um, disbanded uh, boreholes, which we are now resuscitating. Uh, the other one is on Nick. Uh, uh, and in, in the Pichi village where we are supplying about nine, nine villages with, with water and it's about to be completed as we speak. Uh, the other one is uh, Mamapela where we are also supplying up ar about 10 villages around uh, that particular area. And the other one is your Morkopi reticulation to supply about seven villages. All of these um, uh, uh, projects are meant to improve uh, on our water distribution and supply in various villages. So we do have, uh, to a certain extent, uh, um, a, quite a number of projects that we are trying to, to, to increase the supply and the distribution, though we are acknowledging that we currently do, do not have the sufficient funding to really penetrate through all our 178 villages within Mohalakwena local municipality. And maybe one must take this opportunity and uh, an advantage that um, it will be really appreciated if the, the project, big project that was started sometime in 2010, where uh, the national government, especially Copta, wanted to supply water and uh, throughout the villages uh, of, of Mohalakwena. The project was called Flag Bushielo where it was just uh, abandoned due to the insufficient uh, funding and we are still awaiting the national department to come through and assist us to uh, complete that particular project otherwise uh, we are doing our best in, as a municipality to ensure that we we really penetrate through our villages and our surrounding areas to supply water uh, thank you chair mm. There's a question that I raised about an employee who was uh, suspended since 2018 for stealing diesel. Okay. 
Why are you dodging my question? Please. No, thank you, Chair. Thank you, yes? Chair. Sorry about my apology about that. Um, with regard to the employee who was uh, suspended in 2018, Chair, uh, I think you will note that part of the suspensions uh, that we have started is also uh, tapping into why or the delay of some of the officials who have been suspended for a longer period than anticipated while the matter could have been uh, dealt with within a reasonable uh, period. Uh, where in, in, in terms of this specific, specific um, uh, suspension, the disciplinary hearings have been going on, but what actually led to the delay uh, on this specific one was that there were a number of a number of hearings that were postponed over time, which uh, they believe and the, the, the assumption would be that uh, our officials within were really uh, not doing what they were supposed to be doing in ensuring that they do fast track on this. And uh, in one of the charges of one official that has been suspended, we are also saying there was a vi violation of labor law prescripts and, and which includes some uh, uh, suspensions which were delayed over time. But we are happy to really uh, report that we are now coming to a finality of, uh, of, of the case. And we are only waiting for the sanction to be uh, pronounced uh, whereby uh, the matter will then be finalized and be closed. And we believe that it will also will give it a direct- When is that? When will it be? Because we wait, we're gonna wait indefinitely. When is it going to happen? We believe that before the uh, the end of the financial year, this matter will be, will be concluded. Yeah. You know, when is the end of the financial year? It's 30 June next year. Are you serious? No, no. I'm saying end of the uh, the, third, uh, the third quarter, which is end you of You said end of financial year. We were listening to you. And uh, then, okay, it's fine. You remember last time when we interacted with you, there was an issue of the illegal appointments that were made. You know the story. And then mm -hmm. maybe somebody must then share with, in particular, on the intervention, because this is the issue that also Councillor um, Maipa raised. And nobody seemed to be wanting to respond to that, because that was the issue. You remember to say these people, they were not even on the organogram, and they're going to cause the strain for the, for, the, for, the, for the municipality moving forward. What processes is the intervention? Because also, uh, Mr. Bushiello, you spoke about that in the past. You're not giving us an update on that one as well. And then talk to the issue of Makwelering a community hall that has been under renovation as well for the past four years. I've seen it here in the chat group now. Just to renovate a community hall, it takes you four years. And any other incomplete projects. Because the thing that is not coming, we didn't see it in your report earlier in Tanini. If you know a meeting with Tanini uh, MEC, you remember Tanini was able to account for all incomplete projects. Will you do that in writing, MM, to share with us the status of your incomplete projects and the lifespan of them for how long have they been incomplete? We will share that in. We'll share that in writing, Chair. Okay. The PDO of Salga, you must ask Councillor Shai to come back because we are going to go to the next item and we want Salga's uh, view input. I see he has just left. Maybe it's the network one. Uh, can I hand over to the administrator, then the MECs to wrap up on Mokalakwena? as if there are matters that they want to raise as part of the follow-up so that we can deal with our next item on the agenda. It's you, yes, hey, Mr. Bushiello. Yeah, thank How you. How is the intervention assisted? Uh, thank you. The, there is a question in terms of the, whether there is a, a stability in Morala when uh, as far as labor is concerned. Uh,
Mr. Bushielo, where are you? We have lost you. Mr. Bushielo? Mr. Bushielo? Colleagues, it's only me who can hear him. Uh, we it looks like he's disconnected, Chairperson. We'll try and locate him. Okay. The HOD wanted to say something. Um, yes, initially, Chair, I, I wanted to, to um, assist them. Well, yeah, look at him. Assistant, while you were looking, yeah, maybe you can respond on the issue that he was supposed to also respond so that we save time. Okay, thank you, Chair. I think quite a number of issues um, were properly responded to by, by the MM and the commitment to submit um, a, a detailed information in writing, especially with regards to the financial recovery plan. Um, and and the foreign and the uh, uh, the cost implications on the on all the forensic investigations I'm covered uh, with on the issues. Uh, I'm partly covered chair with um, the stability on labor relations issues. Um, but just to add, and I suspect that's what um, the the uh, Mr. Bushello was probably going to add. He's back now, chairperson. Um, one of the other, one of the issues that was a contributory factor to instability in the municipality was um, also the displacement of some of the officials, um, the overtime related issues, as well as the non-functionality of the labor forum, uh, the, the local labor forum. Now, after the, the intervention, the, labor, the local labor forum was resuscitated. And because now there is a platform for engagement, that is also one of the reasons why the labor related issues have since uh, improved. They are now working, they were working on the overtime policy to correct all the wrongs that actually occurred previously and um, to also close the gap in terms of the additional staff members that were uh, employed, which you um, just raised a uh, chairperson, and I hope you will touch on that. And the fact that um, the, the people who were supposed to be placed or absorbed as per the, the, the arbitration award have since been absorbed. Um, the only ones that are outstanding are those ones that were actually employed on a temporary basis, and they are seeking legal opinion on that matter in terms of how to resolve that one. But um, everybody is now um, being placed where they're supposed to be placed, and um, the ones who are supposed to be absorbed are actually absorbed. Chair, lastly, before I hand over to Mr. Uh, Bushielo, I would um, humbly request, I know the chairperson had also had already made a ruling on the matter, um, which, with, which, regard, which relates to financial viability. I would want to request chairperson that um, the, the detailed written information be submitted together with all the information and not necessarily tomorrow as the chairperson had requested the speaker to do because um, it's a detailed information and they still have to put it together. That would be uh, my last input chairperson thank you thank you hod uh, mr Bushielo, you are back don't repeat what the hod has said eh? yes uh, yeah just just to reiterate that uh, the labor relation matter has been stabilized but uh, just to name key issues that can be a problem like uh, there is still an issue of uh, pump operators those are the people that are operating boreholes their place needs to be uh, uh, addressed as well if we don't address it it can cause uh, labor unrest in in future the other issues that the municipality was able to ensure that they they, they restore a stability in terms of labor is that uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, re reinvestment for people that have been working during COVID-19. Uh, and the council has uh, approved 
their requests that they need to be reimbursed. I think if the, the municipality can uh, fast track the issue of paying them, it will also help to, to stabilize the labor relation uh, in that municipality. The other issues that could be of red flag is that uh, those people that have been absorbed, they, they, in terms of the arbitration award, they need to be paid retrospectively from July. So there were a, a few of them who, who, who are still to be paid for, for July. Uh, currently, the municipality is still assessing the, the, the cost of, 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 of this uh, payment so that they can be able to pay these uh, uh, workers. I think what the workers wanted is that uh, they need a certainty. When are they going to be paid? If the municipality could say that they will pay them in April, they don't have a problem. But they wanted to have a certainty in terms of when, when are they going to be paid. So I think that starts in terms of the, the labor relation. But let me just also emphasize the issue of the financial recovery plan. The financial recovery plan is three-phased. The, just in summary, the first phase is about the financial uh, rescue. In that financial rescue, we have identified some uh, immediate actions that needed to be done. There are key, six key areas that we have identified in those uh, phases. The first one being that uh, we need to ensure that uh, the budget is funded. The second one is about uh, cost containment cash flow management, trading debtors and collection rates, expenditure credit, credit management, and also ensuring that we reinvest the conditional grants. So in each and every of this, we have created a, a, a milestone and a time frame about when are we supposed to achieve. The second one is about stabilization. In the stabilization, we are identifying systems and key policies that will make sure that uh, we could be able to to make uh, the, the the municipality function operate uh, uh, optimal so those are some of the things if you look at the as the mms indicated that they will share the 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 plan with 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 with, with the portfolio committee members mm -hmm. it is very clearly at the end of the plans the time frame and the key issues that we wanted to do. That is why I've been indicating that uh, we needed to ensure that uh, the intervention team is also there to ensure that uh, they monitor the implementation. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Honorable Mpumza, can you mute your microphone, please? Mute your phone. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Administrator. And Mrs. Squatty, anything to say as we close on Mukhalakwana? The mayor sent a message that uh, she was struggling to with network, but I think the question around the mayor's car was addressed by the speaker. And Mrs. Sikwati, are you still here with us? Yes, Welcome. Sir. Okay. Um, I'm here. Out of the follow-ups, is there anything you want to say before I hand over to the MEC? No, no. No, um, Chair, just to say that uh, I thought uh, one of uh, Colleagues let's have raised the issue you, of milestones, and I thought we had. Uh, and Mrs. Kwati, let's see your face, please. There you go. Yes. Mm. I thought we had uh, already alluded to. Thank you. I thought we had alluded to the issue of uh, the milestones um, that we feel that uh, if we had uh, reached those then we know that the municipality would be on a better footing. And uh, we have, I have already um, 
alluded to those, uh, which was the uh, budgeting and reporting. Uh, the MEC is frozen. MEC Magamu? MEC squad is frozen. Thanks, uh, Chairperson. New management <laughs> and uh, supply chain. Uh, Sorry. Is the madam is back? Proceed, Mrs. Squatty. You had frozen. Yes, and I thought those were. Oh, I thought uh, I was horrible. Uh, 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 issues of uh, <laughs> supply chain management to ensure that uh, they are able to enforce transparency and effective management uh, as it relates uh, to uh, matters of procurement in the municipality. Because you can see that uh, from uh, the unwanted expenditure, um, it was because of uh, uh, those issues that uh, uh, they were lacking uh, transparency, but as well, um, not uh, enforcing a uh, compliance within the municipality. Uh, issues of uh, um, um, asset management and so on. And I think uh, even the issue of uh, audits within the municipality and ensuring that uh, they are able to, from time to time or monthly on monthly basis, they are able to ensure that uh, there's a reconciliation and so on in terms of their finances. So we believe that uh, if uh, they are able to um, have uh, um, all these uh, areas that I've already mentioned, which are milestones, the municipality should be in a good footing and uh, they should be able to do as expected. But obviously, there are certain things that uh, um, are not part of this, uh, which are part of management, uh, um, which are issues of uh, um, uh, consequence management, which needs to be uh, enforced as well. Because if you don't have a consequence management, it does not matter. Systems uh, can be there, but uh, they can still uh, be overlooked and other things happen. So. We need uh, to have uh, um, matters of uh, consequence management uh, taking place within the municipality. And I think uh, so far, we believe that uh, the municipality, it has been one of those uh, good uh, performing municipalities in the past. So we should be able to get it back to its uh, former glory. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Okay. MEC Makamu, you are? Closing remarks on Mukhalakwena. At least this is gonna make our life very easy. As you do that, once you do that, MEC Makamu, can you zoom on on the issues that relate to Mudimule Mukhopong, the issues that relate to Tubatek Vitakomu, and then also then deal with Tabazimbi. Highlight them. Ne? You respond. You close up Mukhalakwena, and then you deal with these other interventions. I think you just give us those high level things matters then if members have good questions, they will do that and then it's a matter that is ongoing. Remember, we are supposed to, you're supposed to come back to us with MEC Sikwati on the issue of Polokwane uh, municipalities liquidity. Remember National Treasury has raised a lot of issues on Polokwane and I know your presentation didn't touch on that. Then I'm learning that uh, the mayor couldn't even delegate anyone, somebody from the municipality to talk with the matter. So by the time you come back on the issues that you have pounds with us on the 139 intervention, then I think that will give the the, 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 the members an opportunity to ask you further question because otherwise, if I allow people to go up to 11 hours, then that is counterproductive. You have been here, MEC, and you have got an exam to write yourself. You were not supposed to have been here. So deal with the issues and then highlight on all those other three municipalities. Then members will ask you a question, but it's a matter that is an ongoing. We still put it in on the agenda. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much. And uh, thanks for your understanding that. Uh, we should uh, call it a day after questions from members. 
For Mukhalagwen, I think uh, MSC Squadu would have covered me as well to say we're on course. We think uh, cooperation from both internal and external stakeholders may make us uh, to turn the municipality around. And uh, we thank the portfolio committee for the energy and the interest in guiding us in dealing with the matters of Mukhalagwen because it was a municipality that uh, has we not uh, intervened, maybe they will even be at the stage where they could fail even to pay salaries at the rate they were moving. So on those ones, I say I concur with what MEC Squatty said. Let me go to the three other municipalities which had the section 139 uh, intervention. And I must indicate, uh, Chair, from onset that in all the three municipalities you mentioned, that is Tawazimbi, that is Mudimule uh, Mukhopo, and Tuwazi uh, Fitakom, we are now supporting the municipality in terms of section 154. The issues, of course, uh, in Tawazimbi, you could be able to see that uh, the support we are giving, except that there is a uh, a level of uh, political instability because you will understand that the municipality is under the coalition. Sometimes it's a give and take situation wherein uh, every matter gets to be negotiated, a Kamina Kawena type of an arrangement, which makes that. But in terms of their financial stability, it's lack of resources uh, that it. Uh, but now, if you look at uh, them getting their uh, funding, MIG funding and spending, it's a sign that there is an improvement. But also we should report that that municipality also has got out of the disclaimer audit opinion. It's currently sitting on qualified, which is also a sign that there is a, a sign of improvement in that municipality. So in the section 139 ended at the time, where we got into the uh, new administration of the 2016 local government, uh, wherein we were supporting them in terms of section 154. In Mudimule Mukopong, we are seeing progress. The challenge also is the financial uh, situation of the municipality. In the province is the municipality which is owing ESCOM, uh, more than 600 million. They could have done something to sub, uh, have payment arrangement where they sub afforded to pay almost 100 million in a financial year. It's an indication that if they can get to be supported. One sticky issue on them which they are resolving, it's because of the amalgamation of the municipality of Mudimule and uh, Mukopo municipality the issues which dealt with uh, placement of staff and having them to be with the help of SALGA and the uh, human resource expect that we deployed in that municipality. Now people are starting to get letters to get to be placed properly. But the challenge of the municipality is a litigation that is there and unable to appoint an MM because of interdicts which are there. But in the general, there is sign of uh, stability of the municipality. We are able to move on. The other municipality is towards the Fitaho municipality, which also now, as we speak, uh, we are supporting them in terms of section 154. Uh, the good sign is that now they have appointed the permanent CFO. They have appointed the permanent MM. The only challenge which is left with them is the issue of the corporate service director. This was one of the municipalities invested money in the BBS. This has been created by the uh, disciplinary process of the senior management in relation to the BBS matter. But as we speak now, the CFO who is there, uh, it's coming with me, just the financial recovery plan and the municipality seem to be getting standing. The stinky issue with this municipality which has still to be resolved is the issue about placement, because the amalgamation of towards uh, and Fitakomu 
brought in some disparity in terms of certain positions. It's a matter that we are dealing. But also currently, there is a matter which I have requested them to update us properly about their lease uh, agreement of the offices they are utilizing, which may be an issue. But uh, we have requested them, and I think uh, myself, HOD, and Treasurer and Public Works will try to assist the municipality to more to ensure that they resolve the matter amicably without necessarily causing serious challenges because of the lease agreement that they have signed. Those are the issues I can say, uh, but uh, I think uh, a prepared report will be able to be sent to the Secretariat for you to be able to uh, get more detailed information. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, but there are questions that members want to ask you, ne? Yeah. You just respond to the questions as the members are asking them. Can I see a show of hands? The members, I see Mam Kizze's hand is up, Pumza, and who else? It's the two thus far. Let me allow you to do no, that. On no, sure. No, sure. I, I, I'm not uh, uh, ending up. I'm fine. Okay. Yes. Honorable Mpumza. Is he not coming? Okay. If he's not coming, can I talk on Tawazim intervention? Chair, I have since uh, suspended my question. You're suspended? Yes. No. You no longer want to ask questions? Yes, sir. I'm okay. Okay. Let me deal with this quickly. With regard to the Tawazimbi one, uh, the Provincial Executive Committee has resolved that uh, you request National Treasury to undertake forensic investigation of all municipal activities to unearth the financial irregularities. However, it's on record that Treasury could not conclude the investigation due to lack of sufficient records or information in the municipality. So the question is that uh, what alternative ways is the PEC considered to finalize uh, the, 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 the forensic investigation? And then the other issue on the matters, as you've said, MEC, Following the decision to rescind the PEC resolution to invoke 139 intervention in Tabazimbi because it had not improved the state of the municipality, did the province then complete a close up report? Is there a close up report? If the main challenge and lesson less learned was the ineffectiveness of appointing of one administrator instead of a team of administrators to support the lead administrator, then why did the PEC then choose to resign the intervention of um, appointing the requisite team of administrators? So then the other issue with regard to Mohopong, uh, what is the progress regarding the implementation of the forensic recommendation table to the executive committee of Mudimbule Mkhoponi in September 2019? And then the other issue with regard to Mudimbule Mkhoponi, what are the factors behind council and the trade union's resistance against the finalization of the transitional measures resulting from the merge of former Mukhopo, the merge of former Mukhopo and the Mudimule local municipalities. And then we want to understand also what are the key areas of the disagreement. Uh, part of the terms of reference for the intervention in Mudimule Mukhopo was stabilizing the financial situation in the municipality by ensuring amongst others, thinks that it honors its payment agreements with ESCO. But if you check and read their reports and the AG report, ESCOM's debt has ballooned drastically since the termination of the intervention. 
and there was no payment agreement in place as at the end of June 2020. The three financial experts that are deployed into the municipality, is it an indication that uh, they did not transfer the skill? And how is the province then correcting uh, this? And the other issue on the same municipality is at what stage is the process of appointing an MM in Mudimule Mukhupung? What were the circumstances leading to the June 2020 suspension of the MM also in Tawazimbi? Uh, and what is the status of that matter? And then what is also the progress with regard to the finalization of the development of what operational plans in Mudimule Mukhupun, including Fita Homu towards? And what is the nature of the unresolved challenges with mining houses that led to the non-establishment of what communities in the five wards in the five wards in Fita uh, Homu towards and the uh, uh, the eleven was in Tawazimbi. So those are the issues that one wanted clarity on MEC. Uh, champion, mm -hmm. Yes. I think uh, making presentation will have assisted. Mm. Because... Uh, I've read this thing from your presentation, remember? Yeah, because in some instances, if I were to look at the issue of Tabazimi, the lessons learned uh, in the report, we, we do indicate what is it that we have learned out of the process. Uh, and uh, what are the suggestions uh, going forward? That, hence, that's why in Mukara Kwena, we did not send a single individual. But I want to request uh, my HOD and the DDG to respond to some of the issues you were raising. If there are some which they will leave, I will come back and take them. HOD and DDG. DDG, then HOD. DDG. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Chairperson, and, and good evening once more to members of, 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 the, of, the, of the committee. Um, just uh, um, Maybe I'll start with the Tabazimbi, the issue in relation to the to the municipal manager. Uh, after the municipal manager was suspended, he has subsequently resigned. Uh, so it means that the municipality is now without an, an MM. And also on the on the tours, the, the department has been working with, with, with the municipality, but it's still a challenge. Uh, to have the, the uh, um, world committees established in those two areas because of the difficulties that have been encountered by the municipality from, from, the, from the mining houses. Udimule Mohopong, Chair, the forensic um, report indeed was tabled in council, um, council adopted it, and the implementation is currently underway. There are disciplinary processes that have been started um, in relation to the officials that were named in the, in the report and in relation to a specific service provider that was identified in the, in the uh, forensic uh, report. Um, the, the last report when we engaged with the, with the municipalities that the matter has been handled and uh, handed over to the law enforcement agencies and the municipality is awaiting um, the law enforcement agencies to continue with that process. Chair, on, on honoring payments, indeed it was one of the uh, items under the terms of reference. And if we, we, we do an assessment, when the intervention team was still in the municipality, indeed the municipality, though it wasn't paying 100% of the current uh, 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 amount due to ESCOM, there was a great effort to pay, but in the main, most of the payment came from the grant that was allocated by the provincial department. So there was an agreement in place uh, and, and payments were made. That is why during that time, we never had a situation where ESCOM decided to, to cut off the electricity. However, it should also be, be, be noted that 
how the, the intervention also ended was a little bit abrupt, if I can use that way. Once the, there was a constitutional court amendment that declared the amendment of the uh, Systems Act um, irregular, we, the provincial government then received a, 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 a letter from, from the municipality indicating that now that the Systems Act as amended has been declared uh, unconstitutional and invalid, it then means that we can no longer as a provincial government through the MEC second managers to act in senior positions in the municipality and the municipality subsequently then identified and recommended within the internal staff members that would then uh, officials rather that would then act in those in those positions while they were uh, concluding the the the, procure, um, the recruitment processes now what the provincial government then had to do was just to ensure a transition where we could then conclude some of the work that the team was doing because then uh, we could not continue to have members of the intervention team fully a uh, uh, part-time, I mean, uh, full-time in the municipality because they, they could then not exercise what they were meant to exercise. And that is what created a bit of a problem. Now, what has exacerbated the, the, the challenge in terms of the ESCOM date is that after the team then concluded its work because of the constitutional court judgment, the municipality reneged on what was uh, the agreement at that time. And in terms of the agreement with ESCOM is that once there's a payment agreement and you do not honor that agreement, then the agreement lapses and all the interest and everything kicks in. And since that time, there's been a, a delay because of disagreements between the municipality and ESCOM. Uh, Cockstar and Treasury have facilitated a, a discussion with ESCOM and the municipality to a point where now there's, a, there's been an agreement on how the payment agreement uh, should then be structured. Unfortunately, when the matter was served in council last week or a week before last, uh, council decided to take the agreement back to the Finance Portfolio Committee uh, for it to consider that, that item because it had not gone through that structure. If that had not been the case, by now we'd be having a, an agreement between the municipality and ESCOM, which would then help the municipality to be able to honor its, its ESCOM agreement because of the, of the, of the facilitation that Coxter and Treasury led to ensure that the municipality gets into an agreement that it can be able to honor. Because our concern has always been that uh, at point municipalities get into agreements that they are not able to honor because of their financial situation. And as MEC has said, the financial situation in the municipality is quite bad due to a number of, 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 of reasons. One of them, amalgamation, but also because one of the things that led to the intervention was that the municipality had used um, conditional grants for other purposes because they could not be accounted for. And as a result, National Treasury uh, withheld some of the equitable shares and that then led to a dire financial situation in the, in the municipality. The, the situation with the, with, the, with the appointment of the municipal manager, one of the candidates um, interdicted the process and is also an official of the municipality. And he took the matter to court um, and there was a court order uh, that said that the municipality should then restart the whole process. Unfortunately, at this point, the municipality has not done, has not done that. Uh, but the, the, when we were engaged with the municipality very recently was that council had uh, established, has established a, a small committee to look at the legal opinion that they've obtained on how they can close on that matter. And the committee is still to report back to council. We are also worried about this fact because then the municipality has been without a municipal manager for a, for, 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 for a number of years, which is creating challenges because the CFO has now been acting as a municipal manager for, for a long time. The, the other last thing maybe just to mention on the, on the Tabazib as well, uh, is, is that the, the, there's, there's a bit of worry on our side. Uh, Tawazimbi had doing, been doing very well on the management of the ESCOM, on the ESCOM debt, but in the, in the uh, previous months, as we, because we have a regular engagement with ESCOM to check uh, how our municipalities are doing in terms of payment of, of the ESCOM debt, is that uh, 
it has not been able to fully service its account, but we've been engaging with the municipality in that respect to ensure that they are then able to, to make sure that they pay bill as, as it is due. Because if they do not do that, then the agreement would lapse and interest would start kicking in, and that's going to put even more financial strain on, on the municipality. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, Chairperson. Um, thank Chair... you. Yes, thank proceed, HOD. Proceed, thank HOD. Um, Chair, uh, just to add on what the DDG um, has already um, indicated with regards to Mohala Gwena, the key issues that resulted in uh, resistance from uh, both municipalities um, after the amalgamation was um, the, the, Mudimule, the, the Mokopong uh, uh, um, employees were actually traveling to the main center and they were benefiting financially um, as a result of that. And they used that to actually make sure that they are not one. And we also had a situation where we had two local labor forums. They were resisting to match the two. So um, those issues have since been resolved. Now we have one municipality, we have one local labor forum, and the placement issues, as the MEC has uh, alluded to, have actually been finalized. There are only four cases, dispute cases, that they are dealing with, with regards to the placement of all the officials that were affected uh, by the amalgamation. So um, those are some of the issues. The other matter um, regarding the payment that the, the ESCOM debt, what was brought to our attention when we had a one-on-one -on -one engagement with the municipality that is creating challenges for them financially is the fact that they have fixed tariffs um, their tariffs are the same throughout in all the seasons. And as a result, when that happens, every month they start on a back foot in terms of their collection. And that's what they, they apparently they've been trying to engage um, the, the, the regulator, but they have not been given a hearing by the regulator. They've requested us and Treasury to actually intervene on the matter. Myself and the HOD Treasury together with the, with the teams, we are working on the matter to uh, try and assist the municipality so that then at least um, they are able to, to get the things right. They approached a Treasury on this matter to indicate that their equitable share is not enough. And as a result, they are not able to also pay um, the ESCOM debt and Treasury, National Treasury has requested them to go back and rework on the organogram and look at what they have because they are struck them, they, they actually, the wage bill is far more than what they are able to collect. So those are the things that they are working on to try and, and assist the situation. But we are hopeful, I engaged the MM as early as yesterday and the mayor to try and understand why the matter um, that talks to the ESCOM payment agreement did not go through the council and why it was sent back. So they have requested that um, we intervene, we requested that them to actually give us um, the request in writing so that we can assist on that matter. Um, and Chairperson, unfortunately, I didn't get the questions with regards to Fida um, but the MEC did actually touch on the issues. What is remaining with regards to the amalgamation related matters in Fida um, Komutubadze uh, is the salary disparities um, as a result of the amalgamation. Um, there were irregular promotions in the municipality. And we, we then engaged the services of the HR expert that was deployed there. And they were given two options in how to address the, the, the irregular appointments. One option was to reverse the appointments and recover money was, that was paid as a result of the irregular promotions. The second option was to re recover the, I mean, uh, reverse the promotion and not recover the money. Now, they have presented these two options to council and the council resolution was that they must then seek a legal opinion on the option that they are opting for. 
in terms of how they should then implement um, the, their decision or their the council resolution uh, on, on one of those options. So that's the only thing that is still outstanding. They are yet to receive that legal opinion. And once they've received it, then we'll actually monitor the process in as far as the implementation process is concerned. Thank you, Chairperson. MEC, the administrator, if all of them, the DDG and the HOD is almost... My, my apologies. My apology, Chair. I think there's one yes. question you asked. We do have close-up report for the for the for the previous interventions in all the three municipalities: Tabazimbi, okay. Fitakomu, uh, uh, Fitakomu as well as Mudimula Mokopo. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay. MEC. I was still saying that the administrators have adequately responded to the questions. As I've said, these matters are ongoing. Are ongoing. We we'll still continue to engage on them. You are last word to close the meeting. Thanks very much, uh, Chair. It has been a long day indeed. Uh, starting with Zanin, with the, how the portfolio started with the members of the portfolio from the provincial legislature until now. Uh, some of us sitting in one chair uh, it has been a long day, but I think the engagement has been very much fruitful. Uh, the way you saw the HOD and the DDG responding to the issues, it's simple because of the uh, collective uh, working relations we're applying in the department to ensure uh, that we try to support municipalities. It's our intention as a department to make sure that each and every municipality can be viable in the province. So the guidance that we get into, into uh, from this committee and the provincial uh, committee, we sit and try to see how best can we implement it. The sooner the matters between the portfolio committee uh, of the parliament and the one of the legislature uh, resolve will help the department because definitely uh, it can be municipalities which will be the turf where the uh, when the, 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 the what is it uh, fight and we get to be the focus on the matters that we are as the department we are so focused to want to support municipalities uh, despite the challenges we find ourselves in uh, we thank you very much for the whole day session thanks chair uh, the chairperson of salga before i ask uh, mc sukwati to say something Chair, thank you very much. I, I, I definitely need to proceed to apologize for joining the meeting late, but equally that I'm yeah, doing while I'm driving, and I'm not so sure whether the background. The apology was tendered by Councillor okay. Matere. Your apology was tendered by Councillor Matewe. She has been much. here throughout. Yes. Thank we wanted to much. see you but as you are here. Mm. I'm, in, I'm inside a moving car chair. Uh, oh. I'm worried that the background might uh, impact negatively to the surrounding engagement. Okay, but uh, but in the main, but in the main, I definitely appreciate and uh, uh, the, the 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 input and the engagement as fruitful as they were, and I hold a view that uh, they enhance the support that should be given to municipalities moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, MEC Squatty. Thank you, Chair, and uh, let me join my colleagues in uh, appreciating. Um, opportunity to interact, but also to work together to make sure that we are able to create uh, and support the municipalities that are sustainable, because without uh, this kind of uh, interactions, but also oversight, we would not have uh, uh, municipalities that would ultimately live up to the expectations of our people. Because these are the most important uh, 
um, you know, tools of a transformation in society. So without these municipalities, we are aware that they will not go any further, especially in terms of transforming the lives of uh, our people. So I think this is uh, something that we need to continue to do to make sure that ultimately municipalities know that uh, they will have to be held accountable as much as we support them, but they must also take responsibility in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, they are able to account for their actions, but also for the decisions that they're making within those municipalities. And once again, thank you for the opportunity. Yes, let me also appreciate the HOD for Treasury. I see he has been here, uh, Mr. Pratt. To also appreciate, I think Chamber Force was leading the the, the 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 delegation from Cocta, including the CEO of Misa, and all other colleagues, including the support team from Parliament, and the honourable members. So the meeting gets adjourned till we meet tomorrow at nine. Committee members, we are continuing with our work tomorrow at nine. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night, Chair. Brian. Good night. Good night. Good night. Chair. Thank you. Good night, Chair. Hey, Chair. Good night. Good night. Good night. Chair. Good night. Our Chair. Yes. Tomorrow we are going to the Omotoso as Women's League with the President of the NC. Send an apology in writing, okay. Monkeys. we are going to I, oppose we are going to oppose the bail of Amadoso tomorrow with president i receive i receive <laughs> <Papa. laughs> were you brought by bushiri to parliament <laughs> hello is did bushiri no 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 no, no 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 no, I didn't. I was brought by branches in Parliament. <laughs> I don't know, Pushir. Lilia Mamkize. They're branches. Yeah, I was. I was brought by branches. Not by Bujiri. <laughs> Not by Bujiri doesn't know what is a branch, what is the NC branch. <laughs> okay, good night. Mam Pena, Mam Pena, how are you? Good person. How are you? How are you? Good man, good man. Jefferson. Come on, guys. Jefferson. Tomorrow I'm going for a checkup, and then maybe I'll finish early, and then I will come back. Okay, it's so fine then. It's okay. Yes. So, good night, everyone. Rest, man. It's late. Stay, stay. I want you to start another meeting until midnight. Hi, Boche. I mean, I'll, I'll, be wake up at three. I'll be wake up at three o'clock, Chepesin, tomorrow. Okay, good night. Good night. Okay, everyone. thank you. Good night, too. <laughs> <laughs> night, everybody.